father, the swordsmanship of these two people may not be inferior to Uncle Mi Tian. Foil Bist, who specializes in swordsmanship among the Whitebeard Pirates, looked at Tang En and the Yellow Monkey in the picture with a solemn expression. No less than Mita. Marco and the others showed surprise on their faces. No one would doubt Bist's words. In terms of swordsmanship, he is the most vocal in the Whitebeard Pirates. I always thought that there are only three generals in the Navy government, Sengoku, Karp, and Zifa. I didn't expect that the new generation of the Navy has grown to this point. Even if it's not a real general's strength, it's not much worse. Doesn't that mean that Polo Salino and Twain may also be strong at the general level, and if you add Arturia and Esdith before, it seems that the water in the Navy is deeper than I thought. Marco, who has always been fearless, frowned, and there was a worry in his heart that he had never had before. With Marco silent, this atmosphere of worry quickly spread on the ship. Wow la 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 la! Whitebeard laughed loudly, waking everyone up, whether it's one or ten, it's all a matter of my punch. Ha 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 ha, drink and drink. Marco slapped his forehead and laughed at himself, my real dad is the strongest man in the world. What am I worried about? Poor Salino, be careful. After another collision, Tang En wrapped his top armor color around Duan Hun. The entire hands and blade were wrapped in Lu Ying's arrogance, and it was pitch black, which seemed to contain terrifying power. What is this? Huang Yuan's eyes widened, and his intuition told him that if he survived the sword, he would be seriously injured. The yellow ape in front of Tang En turned into a beam of light, and was thousands of meters away in an instant. Advanced armed color, Flo Sakura. Tang En waved with all his strength. Call out. A black sword aura tens of meters above appeared with a frightening aura at the place where the yellow ape had just disappeared. Without the yellow ape blocking it, the black sword energy rushed directly towards the three hills behind. Boom. The three hills were cut in half like paper. After the hills were torn apart, the black sword energy passed through the hills unabated and rushed to the sea outside the uninhabited island. When the black sword energy met the sea, it finally stopped, but the sea was also split like the land, forming a path several meters wide. The entire uninhabited island started from Tang En's position, and was cut in half like a cake as shown in the picture. A few seconds later, the path disappeared and the sea water rushed into the uninhabited island and was cut into a ditch by the black sword energy. The rushing sea water covered up the path of the sword energy and made it clearer. Just kidding. How can this be done by a sword? Everyone in the auditorium suddenly felt that their position might not be so safe. I thought I knew Tang and very well, but I still underestimated him. It's no wonder there are wives like Artoria and Estes with such strength. A trace of surprise flashed in Jean Guo's eyes, and he couldn't help but said. Lieutenant General he nodded and said with a smile, I didn't expect to get such an unexpected harvest in the first round. It seems that our goal has been achieved this time. That's right, with Tang En's sword alone, many things can be destroyed by themselves. Warring states also smiled. In a small town in the New World. Is this the strength of the head of the branch? Kaido, who escaped from the prison, looked at the screen of the image worm and directly dispelled his original idea of revenge. Are you kidding me? How could he continue with this kind of slash? Kaido could tell that if Tang En stood on the periphery of the island, the sword just now could definitely split the entire island. Hee <laughs> hee, Tang En, you are really going to kill me. Seeing Huang Yuan wipe the cold sweat from his forehead, he stared at Tang En, wanting to hear the other party's explanation. I've almost finished warming up. Tang En shook his head and said with a light smile, now you attack me and defend, you try with all your strength first. As soon as Tang En finished speaking, the top-level knowledgeable person predicted Huang Yuan's next move, and his body slightly dodged to the side. Light speed kick. The yellow ape, who had been suffocated for a long time, turned into a photon with his right leg, and kicked Tang En directly at the speed of light. Boom! 
A huge explosion sounded. The speed of light kick that Tang and dodged directly hit the hill behind Tang and, and the entire hill was directly blown away by the yellow ape. The air wave of the explosion whipped up a strong wind. Hehe, he, your fruit ability is really strong. Looking at the kicked hill behind him, Tang and raised his brows and said with a smile, I thought you were going to use the Tian Kanjiun sword all the time. Hey! My strongest skill is not swordsmanship. Huang Yuan stared at Tang En, with a wretched smile on his face again, Tang En, do you still remember what teacher Zifa said to me during the graduation assignment? If I remember correctly, it should mean that your physical skills are mediocre and you rely too much on fruit abilities. Although he was talking, Tang En's hands were not slow, he raised Dunhun and kept slashing at the yellow ape. What do you think Mr. Zifa's words mean? Huang Yuan and Tang and clashed head on, and asked while they were struggling. It seems that you are not too dependent on the fruit, but that you have gone too far in the development of the fruit. Tang and only stared at the yellow ape, with a smile on his face. Twain, you still know me well in the navy. Huang Yuan exuded a dazzling golden light, like a giant Buddha in the Warring States period. He touched Tang and with a few swords and asked, Hey! You said that after today, Teacher Zifa knows that we are the ones with the strongest physical skills. Two, will Wuyan stay in the training camp? To be honest, Tang En thinks that Zifa's evaluation of Huang Yuan in the original book can be understood in another way. Zifa said that the yellow ape's physical skills were not good, but the yellow ape directly drew his sword and was comparable to him in close quarters. In addition, the confrontation with Rayleigh made him unable to intervene in Wang Lufi's affairs. It is certain that Rayleigh was not waterproof at the time. After all, he didn't know that Xiang was helping Wang Lufi. From these two points, it can be seen that Huang Yuan's physical skills are definitely not as unbearable as Zifa said. In addition, in the original book, the three of Aokiji, Akakanu and Kizora used to use swords, but after becoming a general, Akakan directly abandoned swordsmanship, and Aokiji held an ice saber that was no match for Amakonoyan's sword. He really walked on this road in the end, only the yellow ape was left. As for Zifa's evaluation that the yellow monkey relies too much on the fruit ability, it is not that he thinks that he spends too much time and energy on the development of the fruit ability in disguise, and at the same time, he also affirms that the yellow monkey is very powerful when it opens the shiny fruit. Now the navy is saying that Tang and can hide, but his family knows his own affairs. Without a system, he is simply a salty fish that cannot turn over, and will die directly in the hands of the beast's pirates. If you say you will hide it. The yellow ape in front of him is the real master. After all, it is the monkey d yellow ape in the hearts of fans in the previous life. Bakakai and Guyu Huang Yuan crossed his hands. Photons gathered on his arms, and immediately after that, countless light bullets shot at Tang En. Each one is like a small shell, shattering the ground. Jingle. Faced with this move, Tang En unhurriedly waved his sword to resist, and under his superb swordsmanship, all the light bullets in front of him were cut in half. Dissipate into the air. I didn't expect you to still think about Teacher Zifa in your heart. That's right. You have been in the headquarters all the time, and you have to suffer from his temper every day. I don't care what he thinks. But there's one thing I want right now. That means our game can end. Tang and used the armed color to wrap Duanhun again, his hands and the blade of the sword turned black again, and his aura instantly soared, and the huge power from before erupted again. He <laughs> he. Duplicity, this is not like you in my memory. Hearing that Tang En said that he didn't care, Huang Yuan showed disbelief, and then seemed to remember something, with a smile on his face and said, Tang En, in a few days, I will I have a present for you. After finishing speaking, Huang Yuan put his arms up and down his chest, and the dazzling photons condensed on his chest, making people unable to open their eyes. Comparing the sky in the afternoon with the light cluster on the chest of the orangutan, it seems to have turned into night, which shows how huge power is contained in it. 
Both of them tacitly used their strongest move, knowing that this move should push the fake match to a climax and end. It's so dazzling. The light cluster on Huang Yuan's chest suddenly became larger, like a small sun, making it difficult for everyone present to look directly at it, and even the surrounding photographers could only record a piece of white light. Call out! Tang En once again slashed out a black sword energy that was tens of meters long, tearing the ground and splitting it towards the ground one meter to the right of the yellow ape. This time, the yellow ape didn't dodge. The dazzling light group and Tang En's dark broken soul formed a confrontation between light and darkness. Noisy. The ball of light on Huang Yuan's chest shot directly at the ground one meter to Tang En's left. The two powerful forces bombarded together in the middle, and instead of exploding immediately, they formed an extremely unstable sphere of light and darkness. Seeing this scene, Tang En stepped back and retreated, and the ground under his feet was crushed by the reaction force. The yellow ape also turned into a beam of light and flew to the edge of the island. Rumble The violently trembling sphere finally couldn't keep erupting and the explosion caused the surrounding sea to set off turbulent waves. As if the entire island was about to be torn apart, it began to make an overwhelmed clicking sound. Pang! There was a sudden loud bang in the auditorium on the hillside, and the entire concrete floor collapsed. How is this going? Feeling the floor start to vibrate, Momotu and the others suddenly panicked. These two are too messy. In that case, what about the next game? Looking at the ground that was constantly cracking in front of him, Jean Guo suddenly had an ominous premonition in his heart. This island may be destroyed by two people. Lieutenant General he looked at the panic-stricken generals in the auditorium, with a look of embarrassment on his face, compared with the next game, we should first think about how to let them evacuate safely. Because the auditorium was located halfway up the mountain, and the whole mountain was about to collapse at any time, it was difficult for the weaker major generals such as Momotu and Chafo to evacuate on their own. Humph! The shaky feeling made Esdith very uncomfortable. She snorted coldly, and the cold air permeated her feet, instantly freezing the broken soil under her feet into a whole piece. Then the cold air took over and spread, freezing the originally fragmented auditorium in an instant. A second later, Half of the hill turned into an iceberg. Two seconds later, half of the island turned into ice. Three seconds later, the entire island turned into a glacier. This is... What a mighty force! Is this the ability of Major General Estes? Feeling that the feet were stabilized again, everyone present was shocked, and their eyes almost popped out when they looked at Esdith. Terrible girl! Lieutenant General He and Jean Guo had cold sweat on their foreheads, staring closely at Gao Lengfen's Estes, with the same thought in their hearts. The originally lazy Aokiji had a dignified expression at the moment, without a trace of composure as before. Estes' strength far exceeded his expectations. This kind of strength does not need to be with Artoria to win Kaido, she alone has the ability to defeat Kaido. Is there such a big gap? It seems that I still have a long way to go from the real top powerhouse. Momotu turned to look at Arturia who was aside. While shocked by the strength of Esdish, she also thought that the strength of the woman in front of her might not be inferior to Esdish. Noticing that Tang En and Huang Yuan had found a place to lie down, my king turned to look at Estes, Estes, the battle below is over, let's disperse the ice. Estes nodded and the icy air that permeated the field began to dissipate, gradually revealing the figures of Tang En and the yellow ape. I saw two people lying on the ice, unable to move, and seemed to have passed out. Referee. How to judge this? My king looked around, looking for the figure of the referee. Referee. Where are people? Referee. Where's the referee? They didn't hear the referee stand up and everyone also looked for the referee together. The situation was critical just now, and the people present couldn't care less about protecting others. Now it's really uncertain whether the referee is alive or dead. I am here. The referee's shout came from one direction, and the tone sounded very excited. 
Everyone walked tens of meters in the direction of the sound and finally found the referee on a cliff. After everyone pulled up the referee, they realized that he was unlucky just now, and the ground directly collapsed under his feet. Fortunately, Esdith was frozen so fast that he could catch Bingye, otherwise it might be a disaster. The referee came in front of Tang An and Huang Yuan, examined them carefully, and found that both of them had passed out, asleep. They all lost the ability to fight. It seems to be a draw. Before the referee spoke, my king directly announced the ending. Although Estes didn't speak, he nodded to support my king's statement. As the two reached a consensus, some major generals who supported Huang Yuan also nodded in agreement with the result. The referee stood up and found that the generals behind had reached a consensus, so he pushed the boat forward and said, this game is considered a draw because both sides have lost the ability to fight. After finishing speaking, he hurriedly ran to report the result to Zhang Guo. Is it a draw? Yes. Seeing that the two people in the field were indeed fainted, Zhang Guo nodded and accepted the result. The other side is after the referee leaves. Several doctors helped Tang An and Huang Yuan back to the long-awaited medical ship on the coast. Estes and Aokiji, the two stayed in the middle of the field, ready to go. Now it's a race between them. Because the auditorium was destroyed by Tang An and Huang Yuan in the last battle, there were only some fragmented ice sculptures that could not sit on. And everyone also knows that the so-called safe distance in the auditorium is not safe when the top powerhouses are competing. On the contrary, it is more dangerous than other places in many cases. So after they left the center of the venue, they did not return there. Instead, they boarded a warship with Sengoku and other naval officers and soldiers, and watched with binoculars around Iceland. Estes slowly pulled out the western sword from his waist, staring sharply at Aokiji in front of him. Aokiji untied the cloak of justice and threw it on the ground casually. It would be too embarrassing to fight with the cloak at this time. As if recalling the past, Est said lightly, when I was having dinner with the Navy of the G5 branch, they told me that you were one of the Navy's three natural system lieutenant generals and the strongest person in the Navy's ice system. At a young age, he possesses the strength close to the level of a general, and is called a monster by the outside world. Aokiji obviously didn't expect Estith to talk about this, but he still said casually according to his personality, those are just false names, and in front of you, I am not a monster. I want to see how powerful the person my subordinates have been praising is. Estes pointed at Aokiji with a long sword in his hand. Ice cubes, two thorn spears. With a wave of Aokiji's hand, four ice spears formed around Aokiji, stabbing at Estish. Clack clack. Estith waved a few swords casually, and the sharp blade directly chopped the four ice spears to pieces. Is that the case? Your frozen fruit shouldn't have this strength, right? It's really too weak. After crushing the ice spear, Esdith, who couldn't enjoy the joy of fighting, had a displeased expression on his face, and didn't save the opponent any face. My frozen fruit is not weak at all. Since you want to see my strength, then do as you wish. Being underestimated made King Z frown slightly. Even though Esdith is very strong, it made him a little angry. The current Aokiji is still a high-spirited young man. It is not his character to be despised and not to attack the slacker later. Ice Cube, Storm Pheasant's Mouth Aokiji raised his right hand, and suddenly his right arm gathered the surrounding cold air like a vortex. An ice bird the size of an airplane condensed and flew towards Esdish with a powerful impact. The surrounding ice blocks were directly cracked by the powerful impact, but then refrozen due to the cold air of the ice bird. If the ice bird was regarded as a fire bird, it would look like the tail flame of the ice bird from a distance. We can meet each other. What would happen if it hit someone? That's right. This is fighting. Estes smiled happily, sheathed his sword, and stretched out his right hand to press the ground, but it's useless everything will be frozen by me. At the same time, terrifying icy air erupted from the palm of Esdith, 
and the dazzling white light made people unable to open their eyes. General Binglin. As soon as the words fell, various powerful ice knights appeared on the originally empty ice surface. These battle-tested knights summoned by Esdith charged towards the ice bird like a tide. Rumble. Although the ice bird is powerful, it is gradually weakened under the impact of the ice knight's fearless death. The impact speed and force are getting slower and slower, and cracks appear on the surface of the ice bird. Click. After being charged by many knights, the ice bird finally couldn't hold on and was thrown into pieces. Not good. Aokiji was startled, the ice condensed into thousands of horses and horses in front of him, like the storm pheasant before him, where there was no grass growing, the power was huge. Under the sunlight, each spear shone with a cold light. Bang! An ice knight's spear pierced Aokiji's body. Bang rub! Another spear pierced directly through Aokiji's forehead. Under the impact of the knights, Aokiji's body became riddled with holes and became a huge human hornet's nest. However, his wound did not leave a trace of blood. Fortunately, this is a physical attack, otherwise I would die. The cold air filled the ice holes in an instant, and the hornet's nest ice sculpture reunited into the appearance of a green pheasant. He who can elementalize is immune to all physical attacks. Is it as elemental as that monkey? What a troublesome ability! Esdith thought trouble in his heart, and then the corners of his mouth curled into a moving arc. So what? Estes pulled out the western sword, armed with domineering arrogance wrapped around the entire body of the sword, and rushed towards Aokiji with a stride. Ice Saber Seeing Estes attacking with a sword, Aokiji clasped his hands together to condense an ice saber, and wrapped the ice saber with the armed color. Clang! Aokiji's ice saber collided with Estes long sword. Air waves rolled up all around, and under the influence of the venue, it turned into a cold wind and blew towards the fleet around the uninhabited island. Many weak navies had to tighten their clothes to keep out the cold. Ping pong pong. Jingle. In the blink of an eye, Aokiji and Esdish had already exchanged dozens of swords. From the close match at the beginning to the comprehensive suppression later, Aokiji became more and more frightened. He had used all his strength, but he could not feel Esd's attack. Where is the upper limit of SI? Your sword skills are not bad. The corners of Esdith's mouth raised slightly, and he looked at the Aokiji in front of him with sharp eyes, and then violently chopped Aokiji towards Aokiji. But it's not enough. Bang! The green pheasant was chopped off by Estes with a sword, and he slid on the ice for tens of meters before stopping. The ice saber broke with a clear sound. King Z's ice saber is no better than Huang Yuan's Tian Kanjiun sword. It can be shattered dozens of times with Estes's sword before it breaks. Ailala, it seems that your sword skills are not as good as yours. Seeing that the ice saber was broken, Aokiji also knew that he was not as good as Estish in terms of sword skills. Is it just swordsmanship? Seeing that Aokiji didn't intend to continue using the sword, Estes also put away his long sword, and looked at Aokiji coldly, my subordinates have been arguing about who is the number one in the Navy's ice system, me or you, and I met you today I didn't realize that kind of argument was really ridiculous. Are you also worthy of comparison with me? Estes looked at Aokiji, who was still stubborn after being defeated by him, and snorted coldly in disdain. She hasn't used all her strength yet. If you don't have the same escape method as that monkey, then die here. Esdith jumped into the air suddenly, a terrifying cold erupted behind him, and instantly condensed a huge ice ball with a diameter of tens of meters behind him. This is not finished. The ice ball, like a meteorite, spreads from the bottom to the top. After a while, the entire hockey puck was wrapped in pitch black armed color, and it looked like a huge iron ball falling from the sky from a distance. If Huang Yuan were here, he would definitely recognize that this was the trick that destroyed a small island back then. Arm, leap, and strike. Estes yelled softly, kicked the ice puck wrapped in the armed color, and the puck flew towards Aokiji at a painful speed. Hey, 
Hey! This is a foul! How could manpower do this? Originally, the huge ice ball was enough to shock Aokiji, but he was able to wrap the entire ice ball with armed colors. Is this against the sky? What a power this is! At the same time, no matter whether it was the navies of the Warring States period on the scene or the navies, pirates and civilians watching the video off the field, everyone was stunned by Est's move. This level of attack is simply a god descending from the earth. As a result, some people are happy and others are sad. Some people who boasted that they were going to go to sea to become pirates were scared out of their wits and dared not go out to publicize any more because he would dream of the terrifying scene of Estetha's black ice puck rushing towards him. This is too exaggerated. Marco stared at the terrifying black puck in the picture in disbelief. Is this really human? This level is comparable to that of my father. Marco, who has seen the world, is not bad, but he was surprised. The other crew members of the Whitebeard Pirates were more difficult to calm down than him, and there was even a trace of fear in their eyes. At this level, it's no wonder you can defeat and capture that undead Kaido brat. Whitebeard had no expression on his face and was not laughing wantonly. He thought to himself, from Tang En and Yellow Ape, to now Esdith and Aokiji. I have to admit that the strength of the navy is not what it used to be. These seedlings will grow into towering trees in the future. Perhaps the golden age of the navy is coming. Thinking of this, Whitebeard looked up at the sky, and there was a floating cloud in the blue sky that looked like Roger's face. Roger, what kind of sparks will erupt when the era you want to create collides with this era? On the other side, Kaido, who was asked by Whitebeard to mention, not only gave up the idea of going back for revenge, but also set a principle that the place to go in the future must be far away from the G5 branch and those three perverts. Inside a tavern, Shanks, can your captain beat this monster named Esdith? Beckman, who was drinking, looked at Esdith who was showing his might in the picture, and couldn't help turning his head to the red-haired the boy asked. Of course. The red-haired boy didn't hesitate, obviously confident in his former captain. However, the boy's words immediately drew merciless ridicule from the crowd in the tavern. Ha 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 laughed me to death. What did the brat just say? Boss, he said that his captain can definitely defeat that monster. Ha ha ha, it really makes people laugh out loud. The red-haired boy was unexpectedly not angry, and he was still extremely confident, I'm right. Although she is very strong, she is indeed not as good as my captain. Ha ha ha, this brat is still bragging. The red-haired boy's stubbornness was still met with ruthless ridicule. Finally, a big man more than two meters tall walked towards the red-haired boy with a machete, and said viciously. Little devil, what kind of rubbish is your captain? Tell me, if it's funny, maybe I will let you go. A fat man sitting at another table in the tavern opened his mouth and bit the meaty leg in his hand, and said, Brother over there, it's just a child, there's no need to do this. The redhead and Beckman looked in the direction of the voice together only to see that the other party was obese, wearing small sunglasses, and holding meat in his hand. Wearing a green and white striped hat, a green and white striped shirt, a yellow coat, a blue belt, beige pants and red sneakers. What? Do you want to court death too? The big man snorted coldly and didn't pay the bill. After finishing speaking, he directly put the knife on Shank's neck, and laughed loudly, ha 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 ha. You said that I hacked you to death now, will your trash captain come to rescue you? Call for help. Shout loudly. Call the captain to save me. With a machete about the width of his head on his neck, the red-haired boy looked calm, lifted his straw hat and looked sharply into the big man's eyes. Uh. Seeing this from the red hair, the big man unconsciously broke out in cold sweat, and at the same time felt an ominous premonition in his heart like a prey being targeted by a hunter. Seeing this, Loggy L.U., who got up and left the chair, returned to his seat. He knew that this boy was not an ordinary person. Oh! Shanks stared at the opponent closely, 
a powerful arrogance rushed out of his body, directly stunned the big man in front of him and almost everyone in the field. Only the fat man was still gnawing on the meaty leg, but the trembling arm also showed the uneasiness in the master's heart. At this time, Beckman beside the red-haired man also had a domineering aura around him, which was the same as that of the red-haired boy, but it was only used for self-defense. Seeing his own captain turning back, Beckman roared angrily, Hey, hey, hey! Captain, how many times have I told you, don't use domineering casually? I made a decision. Shanks ignored Beckman's words, but stared at the fat man who was biting the meat, and shouted, I want you to be my crew. Be a member of my red-haired pirates. Hey, hey! Are you listening to me? Seeing that Shanks ignored his own words and ran to think about recruiting crew members, Beckman held his forehead and said helplessly, I really can't do anything about you. Hello, my name is Shanks, join my pirate group. Shanks walked up to the fat man and stretched out his right hand. Dot. Fatty's expression was obviously taken aback, and he didn't understand why this formidable young man in front of him would come out like this. Beckman on the side lay casually on the back of the chair, you just agree, although my captain looks silly, but I am quite reliable. My name is Lackey. L.U., if you can make me eat every meal, I will join you. The fat man also stretched out his big fat hand to hold Shank's little hand. After holding hands, Shanks said happily, great, the red hair pirates finally have a third crew member. Three. Lackey L.U. pointed at the red hair, then at Beckman, and then at himself. I suddenly feel regretful. At this time, the black ice puck rushed towards Aokiji under the blow of Estes. When everyone was shocked by the strength of this blow, Lieutenant He calmed down the fastest, and immediately took the microphone in the hands of the warring states and shouted to Estes in Iceland, Estes, stop immediately, this you won the game. When Lieutenant General he said this, Jean Guo also reacted and ordered the hospital ship behind him. Medical class, prepare to rescue Lieutenant General Aokiji later. All warships retreat 100 meters. Akainu, you are always on standby. This blow may affect this ship. In an instant, warring states issued three orders in a row, showing the ability of its wise generals. The range of this move is too large and my speed is no better than Polo Salinos, so I can't dodge it at all. But King Z, who was facing it head-on in the field, had a sudden change in his mind, and quickly abandoned the idea of evasion after judging that he had no speed to evade. Since I can't hide, then you can only defend desperately. Aokiji put his hands on the ice ground, exerting all his strength, his hands also burst into dazzling white light, and the terrifying cold instantly condensed into a round shield from Aokiji's side. One layer is not enough. Ice Age. King Z shouted again, the original dazzling white light became brighter, and another layer of ice shield wrapped the first small shield around it. As King Z continued to squeeze the power in his body, layers of ice shields rose from the ground in a few seconds. An ice hemisphere no less than a black puck is formed. Boom. As soon as the black ice ball came into contact with the ice hemisphere, there was a violent explosion immediately, and the two forces collided together. Countless shattered ice cubes stabbed around like blades under the leadership of the air waves. In this small island formed by the forcible condensation of ice blocks, the ice blocks connecting the land pieces began to break, and the icebergs began to collapse. This blow directly smashed the whole of Iceland into pieces. This is not over yet. The overflowing cold air spread to the periphery of the island, and the originally surging waves were directly frozen into ice sculptures after being touched by the cold air. Red Dog Seeing the cold air coming, Sengoku shouted to Akainu beside him. Meteor Volcano Akainu stepped forward and stood on the bow. The double fists produced a large number of huge lava fists with lava, and the magma fell like a bolide shower, crushing and melting the originally frozen sea. Ice meets magma. Produces a large amount of warm steam to protect the fleet. Everyone on board felt a little warmer. 
However, since these cold airs are emitted by Estes and Aokiji together, the future red dogs may be able to solve these cold airs, but the current meteor volcano can only crush and melt most of the ice surface, and the center of the island is still covered by cold ice crystals. Cover On the hospital ship on the other side Porosalino, do you feel the temperature is getting colder? Tang and lay on the hospital bed, blew on the steaming teacup in front of him, and took a light sip. Hey! It's true what you said. Did something happen outside? Huang Yuan was lying on the hospital bed next to Tang En, holding a cup of hot tea in his hand, the aroma was tangy. The two of them didn't look like injured people at all, but looked like nobles enjoying life. Guard, what's going on outside? Tang En shouted angrily towards the outside. A soldier outside opened the cabin door rushed into the infirmary with a biting cold wind and reported to the two, report to the two lieutenant generals, the battle between Major General Estes and Lieutenant General Aokiji outside has spread here, so the temperature has suddenly dropped. Drop. All right. All right. I see. Close the door. Tang En and Huang Yuan were so shocked by the cold wind that they almost shook the teacups in their hands. Yes. The guard hurriedly closed the cabin door tightly before Tang and shrank out of the bed and continued to drink hot tea. Feeling the warmth in his hands, Tang and felt much more comfortable, so he lazily said, It's better not to go out. I think so too. Huang Yuan nodded, took a sip of tea, and gradually felt comfortable. The boom fades away. Only ice and air surround the whole of Iceland. The warship where the Warring States period was located was overflowing with steam, making it difficult for people to see what was going on in Iceland. How are you doing? Report the damage to all the warships. Warring States took out the phone bug and asked the surrounding fleets about the situation. Lieutenant General Crane looked in the direction of the small island, his sharp eyes seemed to pierce the fog, Sengoku, is Aokiji still alive? Send someone up to see the situation. Yes, you guys. Forget it, let's go. This ship is heading to the shore, find a place to stop. Warring States originally wanted to send someone to take a look, but then thought that if something unexpected happened to these soldiers, it might be bad luck, so he simply waited for someone to check the situation together. The warship found a place to stop in Iceland. After the shattering just now, the reorganized Iceland has almost no land, only cold polar ice. Estes. Artoria was the first to spot Estes. Everyone followed Artoria's gaze and saw a tall figure standing on the ice. Blue pheasant. Immediately afterwards, everyone also found Aokiji lying on the ground in front of Estes. Unlike the spotless Estes, Aokiji looked a bit miserable at the moment, half of his body was frozen directly and there was a large pool of blood on the ice. No way. Jean Guo stared at the man in military uniform on the ground with white eyes, he couldn't believe his eyes. He's still alive. Seeing the misunderstanding of the Warring States period, Estes said lightly. Ordinary people would have died of organ damage long ago, but Aokiji has the ability to freeze fruit and has a strong resistance to ice. Lieutenant General Aokiji is still alive. After the inspection, the medical soldier found that Aokiji was still breathing, so he shouted. Great! All the Dove generals who followed showed smiles. At this moment, everyone was very happy because Aokiji was still alive, and no one noticed the displeasure on Estetha's face. Now that the outcome has been decided, the referee stood up and said, Since Lieutenant General Aokiji has lost his ability to fight, then this match will be won by Major General Estes. Congratulations, Rear Admiral Estes. You can now be said to be the number one naval ice system. After the referee announced the result, he congratulated Estes immediately. Such a young navy who defeated the monster Lieutenant Admiral Aokiji must be one of the little pokers who will stand at the top in the future. Everyone was very moved when they heard the referee's words. But since Estes defeated Aokiji in a frontal battle, the doves in the navy can only acquiesce in this result. Dissatisfied? 
unless you can beat this woman who is even more monster than monster. Not only the doves, but all the navy present, including Akainu, also looked at Esdith with admiration. Aokiji's strength Akainu is clear, the two have practiced so far, and I can't say that I can definitely defeat him. But the Esdths in front of him can easily do this step. Not to mention that Aokiji couldn't deal with the blow just now, he probably would be the same. It is estimated that the general of the Warring States period may not be able to beat Esdths. Your Excellency Estes, congratulations. It was basically the first time for all the naval forces present at the headquarters to see Estes make a move. Originally, they always thought that Kaido was won by the joint efforts of Estes and Arturia. I understand that my vision is still too small. Although Sengoku attached great importance to Aokiji, he was also very happy that Estes was so powerful. In addition, Aokiji was saved by Esdish's life, which was enough to eliminate Pigeon's hostility towards her. So Sengoku took out the camera bug and announced the result to the whole world, I declare that Major General Estes challenged Lieutenant General Aokiji, success. From now on, there will be another strong navy man on the sea who will make the pirates tremble. She is the strongest ice element in the sea, Estes. After Sengoku finished speaking, he pointed the camera bug at Esdish, and everyone wanted to hear what kind of victory speech Esdish would have as the winner. Humph! What's there to congratulate? Too weak! Are you that weak? Unexpectedly, facing the camera bug Esdith, he snorted with disdain, his tone tinged with contempt. Major General Estes, what did you just say? The referee blinked and couldn't believe his ears. What did he just hear? Major General Estes is too weak in mocking Aokiji. Impossible, everyone is a navy. How could Major General Estes say such a thing? You are all too weak. Where is there anyone who can satisfy me? Facing the referee's question, Estes unceremoniously repeated his thoughts. This is too much. How can you say such a thing? Apologize. Even if you defeat King Z, you can't be too arrogant. All the generals present were not ordinary people, and under the repetition of Estes, they completely confirmed what Estes said. Too weak. Does this despise them all? Even if you are powerful, you must apologize. Hee <laughs> hee, only the weak need to apologize. Aokiji's loss can only mean that he is too fragile. The weak eat the strong. The truth of the world. Esdith's face remained unchanged, and his light tone seemed to be stating a fact, a fact in her opinion. Major General Estes, what you said is too much. Jean Guo frowned slightly, feeling very uncomfortable with what Estes said. The law of the jungle is indeed the truth of the sea. But not the truth of the navy. Your Excellency Arturia, how does Esdish look? Mamoto looked at Arturia beside him. This person came with Esdish. Looks like a fight, doesn't it? My king directly opened his mouth to block Dao to his words. Peach Rabbit nodded. Arturia begins to tell the story of Esdith. Esdith was born in the West Sea. He is a race that specializes in hunting sea kings the daughter of the patriarch of the Balots clan. The idea of the weak and the strong has been deeply rooted since childhood. After returning from a solo hunt, I found that the whole family was wiped out by a foreign country in the north. Since then, I have become more convinced that the only way to survive is to become a strong one. Later, he became an out-and-out -out fighting maniac. He treated enemies and prisoners of war very cruelly. In the blink of an eye, he once put down the northern foreign country that was thought to take at least a year to defeat anyway, and buried forty enemies alive. While crushing the enemy's body, it also destroys the opponent's mind. I often deliberately let the opponent go in order to enjoy the battle. My king told the background of Esdith's story. This is the local identity arranged by the system for Esdith, and Artoria also has it, but let's not talk about it now. Have forty enemies been buried alive? This is simply a battle madman. What monster is this? After listening to Arturia's narration, 
everyone realized that the cold-looking iceberg beauty in front of them was a full-fledged fighting maniac, a monster who didn't take human life seriously at all. After being reminded by Arteria, Sengoku also remembered the information he had read before, and realized that Ezdish did not enjoy the fun of fighting from Aokiji. Forty people? What a cold-blooded killer! Rao Akainu couldn't help but give Ezdith a cold-blooded evaluation. He only does things to achieve the goal of justice. If justice succeeds, he also hopes that there will be no war. But here in his death, fighting is all about providing her with fun. Not only at the scene, but through the live broadcast of the camera bug, Dahai also heard Artoria's words at this time. Forty people were buried alive. Such a pervert can join the Navy. Marco couldn't figure it out, forty people, even the entire Whitebeard Pirates combined, didn't kill so many people. A tavern. Shanks and Loggy L.U., who had already joined him, looked at the image of the image worm together. After hearing about Esdith's deeds, they looked ugly and said, Rotten Navy. Iceland. Artoria spoke in astonishment, and then continued, Fortunately, Aokiji is one of our own, otherwise I'm afraid he would have been sentenced to death. Sentence. Hearing what Arturia said, the scene of Aokiji being tied to a post and being whipped appeared in everyone's minds. Cannot imagine. Everyone quickly threw out the thoughts in their minds, but then the person who was tied up suddenly became himself, and Ests was laughing at him with a whip. Very scary. Can such a person really join the Navy? The same voice suddenly appeared in everyone's heart, and this voice became louder and louder, because they were more and more afraid of Esdith, and no one would feel at ease working with such a person. Although no one dared to open their mouths to question, warring states still saw everyone's thoughts. This matter must be explained clearly, otherwise others may misunderstand the Navy through the photography bug. Therefore, warring states shouted to the photography bug. I have reviewed the information of Estes before. Although her actions are merciless, the means she uses are to deal with some heinous enemies. And since she joined the Navy, she has always obeyed the law and made contributions to justice. Countless, and received the highest evaluation from all the officers of the G5 branch. And I also think that those scum in the sea should be sentenced to death. Estes pulled out a moving arc when he heard the words, Yes. People are born to fight, just like the Navy is born to fight pirates. As for the enemy, unless it can bring me fun, otherwise I don't want to fight. We'll spare them. After finishing speaking, Estes directly drew his sword and pointed at the last of the three Navy monster lieutenant generals, and said domineeringly. Lieutenant General Red Dog. You are the only lieutenant general of the three major monsters who has not yet knelt at my feet. Humph. Don't really think that no one can defeat you. Akainu frowned and snorted coldly. Esdith's words are too arrogant, a newcomer who has joined the Navy for less than half a year dares to provoke the entire Navy. Red Dog was not among the people who came to visit Tang and before, so he did not approve of newcomers such as Estes. Estes pointed the rapier at the lieutenant generals behind Akainu one by one, and she had an excited smile on her face, no. No, no. I don't mean to challenge you, but to say you come together. Humph. Seeing that Estes didn't take him seriously at all, Akinus snorted coldly, and finally couldn't help rushing forward. Big fire. The red dog is a killer move as soon as it comes. Everyone saw a huge lava fist made of lava appeared on his right hand, and the surrounding ice surface instantly shattered and evaporated. Esdith was overjoyed to see Kixon, facing the menacing flame-breathing of Akainu, he gathered the cold air with his left hand without a sword and punched the lava monster head on. Hiss hiss. As soon as the two fists, one cold and one hot, collided, the ice and lava continued to counteract each other, killing each other, and steam came out. When the people around saw Akainu making a move, they immediately retreated tens of meters and gave up the field to the opponent. You are similar to the one lying on the ground. You may be able to fight me in the future, but now you are not worthy. 
as death suddenly increased his strength, and the white light in his hand became extremely bright, directly covering the red light emitted by Akainu Lava, and the fist that was originally evenly matched took a big step forward. Boom! In just a moment, as Ditha's icy air completely suppressed Akainu's lava, and the hot magma was also frozen into ice cubes, and then smashed to pieces with a click. Est smashed the fire-breathing fist and hit Akainu on the face, and with a bang, he punched him flying. What? Akainu let out a pain, and the whole person flew upside down. He simply reacted quickly and wrapped his feet in magma and plunged into the ice to reduce the sliding distance. Akainu stopped the car and touched his face. A thin layer of ice crystals condensed in the middle. Humph! Akainu's complexion sank, it was the first time he had been humiliated like this, and after melting the ice crystals with the elements on his face turned into lava, he rushed towards Estes again. Sakaski, are you okay? Seeing that Akainu was punched by Estes, Hwasheishin and other hawks were shocked, and at the same time rushed to help Akainu teach Estes arrogance together. Okay, come back quickly. Seeing that the generals were fighting in groups like street gangsters, Jean Guo stepped forward, trying to stop this farce. Warring states, let them try, and this is also SDC's own request, maybe the more people there are, the happier she will be. At this time, Lieutenant General he beside him grabbed Jean Guo, and at the same time said to the angry generals around him. If you are confident in your own strength, you can also challenge Estes. Let's go together, let her know that there are people beyond the human world. If you don't teach her a lesson today, you won't be crushed to death by her in the future. Everyone rush with Akainu. Hearing this, several Dove generals who had a good relationship with Aokiji also pulled out their swords and rushed forward to join the siege of Estes. Because of their relationship with Aokiji, they originally had some resentment towards Estes but Estish spared Aokiji's life after all, which was tantamount to keeping his hand, so there was no point in finding fault. But it's different now, as DC openly provoked them in front of the live broadcast of the world, and all the people present were ruthless people with many lives in their hands, how could a little girl be so arrogant? Jean Guo, who was held back, looked at his old partner in a daze, and said in bewilderment, He, what are you holding me for? This will embarrass the navy in front of the people of the world. Maybe if Estes loses, but what if Estes wins? Lieutenant General he showed a smile on his face, as if everything was under control, and he looked smarter than the wise general of the warring states period. If she wins. The purpose of this naval competition will be completed ahead of schedule. Estes will become the strongest shield of justice. The mind of Jean Guo turned sharply. After Lieutenant General he made such a move, Jean Guo, who was originally good at fighting wits, immediately thought of his purpose. Seeing this scene, Artoria frowned slightly, and tightly held the holy sword in her hand. She couldn't be sure if it was Dun's order. If Tang En wanted Esdith to take this opportunity to become famous in the world, then she didn't need to make a move. If it wasn't for Tang En's idea, then as long as the Warring States period does not come out, Akainu alone can't afford to challenge the leader, and she doesn't need to make a move. If he made a rash move, it might make Esdish unhappy, and it would be difficult for Tang and to have conflicts. Finally, my king let go of the holy sword in his hand. Okay, good time. If, as my king expected, Esdith saw Hua Shayishin and others coming together with the red dog, and with a wave of the long sword in his hand, a blue sword energy of more than 10 meters long struck everyone horizontally. The three vice admirals with swords clenched their long swords and stepped forward to block Sen Han's sword energy. Clang! The ice blue sword aura and the three long swords were in a stalemate. Successfully blocking the sword aura did not make everyone happy, but made everyone feel cold. It took three people to block the sword aura that was swung casually. It takes several people to stop a single sword chi. It seems that Estes really didn't use all his strength when he fought Aokiji just now. Aokiji, Red Dog, and Yellow Ape, that's all there is to it. Not enough, 
a few more. Esdith looked contemptuously, with a smile on his face that made all the generals want to go up and punch him. Aokiji is not weak. Hearing Lt. Gen. Crane's permission, several pigeons who have a good relationship with King Z also came to the battlefield. With the addition of these people, the number of generals fighting against Estes has reached 18. General Binglin Estes stretched out one hand to the ground, and thousands of troops appeared on the entire ice surface in an instant, and the original navy's numerical advantage disappeared. The eighteen generals could only be exhausted under the impact of thousands of knights, and could not attack Estes. Even so, some of those who were almost in strength were embarrassed and disgraced by riding a spear. Meteor Volcano Akainu wanted to go up to fight A with Estes, but was besieged by several ice knights and couldn't let go of his hands and feet. In a rage, he ignored those teammates and directly used his own range skills. The double fists use lava to produce a large number of huge lava fists, like the magma of the fire meteor shower falling continuously, as if turning the ice surface into a sea of lava. The hot magma rushed in, and the group of ice knights, countless ice knights were directly blown into steam. Hey! Akainu, watch and hit! A major general who was unlucky and was aimed at by the red dog, quickly split the lava with a sword and said with lingering fear. Akainu ignored the Major General's complaints, and stared closely at Esdith in the field through the thick steam. The meteor volcano's damage to General Binglin was somewhat beyond his expectations. At this time, there was almost no ice night on the scene, and they were all buried by the meteor lava. Seeing that his trick was so effective, Akainu was in a good mood and said confidently, it is impossible for ice to defeat magma that is hotter than fire, and it is impossible for your ice fruit, which corresponds to burning fruit, to defeat me. Lava. I didn't expect Akainu to have such strength. Off the court, Sengoku and others were also a little shocked by Akainu's strength. They didn't expect his magma to be able to suppress Esdith's general Binglin. Off the court, Many people saw the scene where a death provoked a group of naval generals. One on one against eighteen generals. There are such ruthless people. This move of General Binglin is really terrifying. Is this Sakaski's meteor volcano? All the pirates in the New World are no strangers to Sakaski, who is the head of the G1 branch in the New World. Major General Artoria, aren't you worried about Major General Estes at all? Seeing that Estes seemed to be at a disadvantage, Momoto looked at my king who was not moving at the side, and was a little puzzled. She knew that the two were together. Estes's strength is not inferior to mine, and he can solve the problem by himself. My king shook his head, his tone was calm, but his words were very powerful. Nanny. No less powerful than you. So you can single out eighteen generals. Good guy. What height is this? Momotu didn't know what to say for a while, but felt that the distance between himself and Artoria was a bit too far. In the field. Seeing that Akainu started talking big, Esdith sneered disdainfully, does that make you so happy just out of danger? However, now you are indeed qualified to practice sword with me. After speaking, Estes held the long sword in his hand and rushed towards the crowd with a stride. Do you still have the strength? Akainu doesn't believe that Esdith will not consume at all after using the ultimate move several times in a row. Bang! Esdith swiftly chopped off a major general, which was equivalent to slapping Akainu directly in the face. Let me see how strong your sword skills are. Akainu who was slapped in the face pulled out his famous sword and rushed to Estes. He has great confidence in his swordsmanship since he was a child. Although he is not as aggressive as the yellow monkey, he is also a leader in the navy. Clang! As soon as the two swords came into contact, Akainu felt a huge force coming from the blade, and Esdith's strength was so great that he couldn't believe it. Looking at the struggling Akainu, Estes joked as if remembering something, I forgot to tell you, the yellow monkey who lost to me before was defeated by my sword. What? Are you also a great swordsman? Chi Chuan was startled. The great swordsman, who was originally one in a million, 
kept showing up like dumplings today. It's a shame that he has been stuck in the swordsman's realm for more than ten years since he was a swordsman in elementary school. Is it true that I am not suitable for learning swords? This thought came to Akaji's mind. Damn it! Major General Estes is also a great swordsman. All the people present heard Estes' words, among them Momota was the saddest, even more sad than Akainu. Originally, my navy was number one in swordsmanship, but now I can't even keep the top three. Looking at Dautu who was silently sad in his heart, my king, who understands people's hearts, comforted him, Dautu, your talent is very strong, and you will definitely become a great swordsman in the future. Uh-huh. Arturia is still gentle. Seeing my king comforting herself, Dautu's heart warmed up. I am full of gratitude to Artoria, and my favorability has greatly increased. Wait. Jean Guo, who was watching the battle, suddenly looked at my king and asked excitedly, Major General Arturia, you are also a great swordsman. Hearing this, everyone turned their attention to my king. And my king smiled awkwardly, seeing Dao Tu staring at him with big watery eyes, he nodded slightly embarrassed. What? Has the world changed? Dao Tu's eyes were dull, without a trace of clarity. She felt that the world was full of malice towards her. At this time in the field, Estes used his strength as a great swordsman to fight against eighteen generals alone. Estes once again slashed Akainu with a sword, and after chopping it into the air, he countered with a sword to block Hua Shayashin's sneak attack from behind. Then he swung an ice blue sword energy and rushed towards Hua Shayashin with a destructive aura, but at this time three people appeared in front of Hua Shayashin with swords and joined hands to block the terrifying blow. Slow and steady, consume her energy. As the commander, Akainu saw Estetha's flaws. The eighteen people in the field gradually developed a tacit understanding, and the originally chaotic tactics gradually became more coordinated. Every time Esdith slashes out the sword energy, three lieutenant generals will resist it, and when she slashes in melee, Akainu will deal with it head on, and the others will look for opportunities to attack. Moreover, all those present were middle and high level naval officers, none of whom were more or less dry and various methods were used frequently. Rao Esdith's swordsmanship was higher than them, and he gradually became weaker in succession. It can't go on like this. Feeling that the strength in her body was gradually weakening, Estes knew that her body was approaching its limit, and if it continued like this, she would probably be the one who lost. Like fighting doesn't mean like losing. And she, Estes, will not lose. Estes turned his mind sharply, and slashed at Akainu with a sword. I told you, it's impossible for you to win today. Seeing Estes slashing at him again, Akainu also yelled and rushed forward. Although it is embarrassing to be cut off by Estes every time, as long as you can win, it is worth it. What? When the two swords hit each other, the gravity that Akainu had imagined did not appear. It turned out that Estish was directly off the ground with the strength of Akainu. Akainu, if you can take this move, I will recognize that you are qualified to be my opponent. If you can't take it, then everything will be over. I saw that the back of Estis, who jumped into the air, instantly condensed into a huge ice ball with a diameter of more than 10 meters, and the dark armed color spread from the bottom to the top. Estis, stop. Everyone, Come to me. Sengoku quickly shouted, and at the same time asked the people present to gather at him for protection. Everyone present knew the power of this move, and it was impossible for Akainu to survive. The pitch black ice puck condensed into shape, and Esdith was not in a hurry to make a shot, but looked down at Akainu and said, I'm very happy today. It's up to you to choose whether to accept this move, as long as you admit defeat now. Akainu snorted coldly, and his whole body exploded with terrifying heat, I said, it's impossible for you to win today. Then let me see your determination. Armed color, leap and strike. Estes raised his long legs and kicked the ice puck towards Akainu. 
Countless cold air followed the ice puck and rushed towards the 18 generals on the ground. Ming Dog Akainu let out a loud cry, his right hand was wrapped in thick lava, exuding terrifying heat, a few drops of lava fell on the ice and directly punched a big hole in the ice. Seeing the ice puck getting closer, Akainu's face was serious, he knew the power of this move. If he was unwilling to face such a natural disaster level attack before, but now the justice in his heart does not allow him to retreat. Ah! Thinking of this, Akainu exerted the greatest strength in his life, concentrated all the energy in his body on his fist, kicked his feet hard, jumped into the air, aimed at the ice puck that was rushing, and swung his right fist with all his strength. Rumble! The red fist and the pitch black ice ball collided in midair, and the terrifying energy dyed the sky red and black which was extremely dazzling. Such a scene lasts for several seconds. The original state of balance was broken, and black gradually began to overwhelm red. Boom! The two forces finally exploded, and the dazzling light hit the center of the collision, making people unable to open their eyes. The world turned into a vast expanse of whiteness. Everything was silent, not a single sound. Boom boom boom! Master Tang En, something happened outside. Tang En was woken up by a hasty knock on the cabin door. Yellow monkey, go and open the door, you are close to the door. Tang En murmured in a daze. I'm not going, I'm obviously looking for you. The yellow ape who was also salted fish changed his posture, and then fell asleep. Time passed by little by little, and it seemed to return to the original point. How is this going? Didn't I lose just now? By the way, why is there nothing wrong with my hands? Standing on the ground, Akainu clenched his fists hard, feeling a little dazed after feeling the force from his hands. I'm still alive, what's going on? Where's that hockey puck? Why didn't it disappear? What just happened? Why am I fine? Not only Akainu, but the rest of the dozen or so people were ready to die when they saw Akainu being defeated by the hockey puck, but for a moment it seemed that everything that had happened before had turned into an illusion. The puck is gone. The explosion is gone. The red dog who was destined to die is still alive. Ests, you dare to do such a thing, it is unforgivable. A gleaming golden figure walked towards Estith angrily. The figure was the warring states in the form of a giant Buddha. He wanted to protect others in a panic just now, but the time was too short, and he wasn't even sure he would survive under that move. Although I don't know why everyone is fine now, but this kind of behavior that endangers his companions makes him very angry. Even if Esdith is very strong and is urgently needed now, he must be severely punished. Do you know that everyone was on the island just now, and your blow almost killed them all? Warring states came to Est's and stretched out his golden palm to aim at Est's with a crushing aura, and was about to slap him. Ding 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 ding! Suddenly, there was an alarm ringing in Jean Guo's arms. Jean Guo paused, put his other hand into his arms, touched a few times, and found a strange-looking phone bug. Everyone present was attracted by the phone bug in Sengoku's hands, because it was the special phone bug of Admiral Steel Bone Kong, the supreme commander of the navy. Jean Guo's complexion became ugly, and he wondered if it was Marshal Kong who saw the video of the camera bug and came to Zingxi to ask the crime. No matter how you think about it, the Marshal's call still needs to be answered. Jean Guo pressed the button, connected the phone and said, Moxie Moxie, Marshal Kong, this is Jean Guo, I'm very sorry. I messed up this time. Esther I'll give you an account of C's matter. I'm really really sorry. While saying sorry, warring states also began to bow to the phone, which seemed to be the inheritor of the quintessence of the Neon Kingdom in the previous life. Gang Gukong said with excitement in his tone, I want to talk to His Excellency Estes. Yes yes yes. I won't do it next time. Jean Guo nodded and bowed, and didn't quite hear what Steel Gu Kong said. In his mind, it went without saying that it was some criticism and education. If you make a mistake, you must nod your head to admit your mistake, 
never raise objections, and don't question the leader. This is his experience in being an official for so many years. There was a great deal of speechlessness on the steel bone Kong Kong's face on the phone bug. Nanny. What won't happen next time? Are you listening to what I have to say? Gang Gukong's tone was filled with excitement, warring states, don't rush to admit your mistakes, you did a good job this time, no, you should say that you did it beautifully. I really didn't expect you to be able to pull such a powerful force into the navy, I want to praise you. Why praise me? Jean Guo scratched the back of his head with an apologetic expression on his face, he didn't understand what Steel Gu Kong meant. Seeing Jean Guo's expression, Gang Gukong slapped his forehead, that's right, it's normal that you didn't know what happened in that space just now. You hand over the phone to His Excellency Estes, and then go to watch the video of the camera bug. Watch video. Jean Guo threw the phone bug in his hand to Estes, and then waved, and the camera bug on a warship was sent to him by the soldiers. Seeing that everyone present was as puzzled as he was, Jean Guo turned on the projection mode. The screen showed the devastating scene just now. Estetha's ice puck completely smashed through the magma of Akainu, and the huge explosion carried blade-like ice blocks flying around. The powerful force on the ice puck shook the ice surface out of cracks before it reached the ground. At this time, Akainu in midair closed his eyes tightly, his ferocious face was stained with a layer of frost, and his expression seemed unwilling to accept failure. Some of the other people on the ground drew their swords and prepared to fight hard, some hid behind others and cowered, and some subconsciously put their heads in their hands and dared not face life and death. On the other side, the dignified Sengoku turned into a Buddha form and took a step forward to protect Lt. Gen. Crane behind him, while aiming at the incoming ice puck with a pair of big golden palms. There are still some people who are rushing to the back of the warring states, trying to avoid danger. This is what just happened. I was protecting Ahi at that time. However, where did the ice puck go now? Why are we not injured at all? Warring states and a group of people saw their actions when the danger just happened in the video, and then they remembered the crux of the problem. Why did such a big hockey puck disappear in an instant when it fell? I was clearly in danger, but now I was unscathed. Everyone stared at the projection intently trying to find out the answer to all this. The screen continues to play. That's Estes. Momotu discovers something unusual about Esther's. Following Dautu's reminder, everyone also looked at Estes in the picture. I saw Estes put his palms together, and a white light came out of his palms. Freeze time and space, Mokabatama. Estes shouted and the white light in his hand suddenly turned into a semi-circular transparent dome that enveloped everyone in the field. Freeze what? Anyone who finds themselves may need ear therapy. I must have heard wrong. No matter what is frozen, it is definitely impossible to freeze time and space. How could this kind of thing be frozen? Everyone didn't speak, but they crossed the thoughts that came to them in their hearts. In the area covered by Mokabatama in the picture, everything seems to be frozen. The red dogs and hockey pucks in midair are as still as statues, and the Sengoku on the ground still maintains the movement of reaching out. Hey! Did the screen get stuck at the critical moment? Could it be that the configuration of this camera bug is not good enough? The Warring States period punched the camera bug. This thing is usually delicious and delicious. Why did it get stuck at a critical moment? But the scene that happened immediately caused everyone's jaws to drop to the ground, and their eyes almost popped out. On the screen, Jean Guo and the others remained motionless. But Estes moved. If it moves only slightly, it can still be called a malfunction. But at this time, Estes directly stretched out her hands and approached the ice puck, and the powerful cold air was transmitted from her hands to the ice puck and the ice puck that was about to explode and crack was refrozen. Then, a steth kicked it up into the deep sea far away. The puck just came out of the range of Mokabatama and went below sea level. My ice can freeze for about one minute, and the explosion in the deep sea thousands of meters away should not affect the surface of the sea. 
Mocha Bottoma can only be used once a day, and it consumes a lot. After fighting with Aokiji, Akainu, and others, Esdith wiped the sweat from her forehead after doing all this. Now she is a little more serious the strength is gone. Immediately afterwards, the original stuck screen reruns. Standing on the ground, Akainu clenched his fists and said to himself in a daze. How is this going? Didn't I lose just now? By the way, why is there nothing wrong with my hands? Then a gleaming golden figure walked towards SDC angrily, the figure was the warring states in the form of a great Buddha. Estes, you dare to do such a thing, it is unforgivable. Do you know that everyone was on the island just now, and your blow almost killed them all? Warring states stretched out a golden palm with a destructive momentum and was about to slap it away. At this moment, Esdith looked at Jean Guo with sharp eyes, but it was difficult for her to stand up, and she had no strength in her body to resist at this moment. At this moment, there was complete silence in the arena. Everyone is digesting what just happened. Everything makes sense. No wonder he was unscathed. No wonder the marshal would talk to us death. Jean Guo bit his lip, and a word appeared in his mind. Unbelievable. If you didn't see it with your own eyes, who would dare to believe that kind of freezing time and space? My own time was stopped just now. This kind of strength is likely to cause an uproar in the whole world. Sengoku was right. At this moment, the atmosphere in Dahai has become crazy because of that video. The ability to freeze time and space is close to a god. Under this trick, no one can avoid the fear in the heart. At this moment, whether it is the big pirates of the New World or those little people who have just set off, they all keep Estus in their hearts as the number one enemy. New World, White Beard Pirates. Hey hey hey. It's fake. How could the ice fruit reach this level? Marco shook his head like the president of a certain country and refused to believe everything in the picture. This must be a fake video. It's a navy conspiracy. Ku la 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 la. Marco, don't deny the facts just because the opponent is strong. Whitebeard took a sip of his wine and laughed loudly, I didn't expect that the ice-type superhuman fruit could freeze time and space after awakening. And I'm the strongest man, Whitebeard. As soon as he finished speaking, Whitebeard raised his right fist to his left shoulder, and the fist was covered with a faint ball of light. What? With a sharp swing, he punched the air to the right. Squeak. The space hit by the fist was like a cracked mirror, making a creaking sound, and the sea also set off a tsunami. Whitebeard's punch temporarily stabilized everyone's fear. While Iceland. As death. Seeing Est's return the phone bug, Jean Guo looked at Est's to say something but he didn't know how to say it, after all, he planned to do it just now. Akainu also opened his mouth, but didn't say a word. Estes didn't care about this, but with a regretful expression, he sighed. Unfortunately, you are still too weak now. There is no way for me to experience the joy of fighting. At the same time, the two thieves who stole wages on the hospital ship, Tang En and Huang Yuan were still sleeping didn't know that Estes had already broken the sky. Two lieutenant generals, if you don't open the door, your subordinates will break in. After a few seconds, there was still no sound in the room. Seeing this, the guard outside couldn't help but kick the door. Bang! As soon as the guard entered the room, he heard a burst of rhythmic symphony, and then looked inside, and saw the two lieutenant generals lying on the bed with their stomachs rising and falling. Ho ho. Lulu. Ho ho. Lulu. Tang En and Huang Yuan snored one after another, and they cooperated very tacitly. Lieutenant General Tang En, don't go to sleep. Something serious has happened. The guard gently shook Dun's arm to wake him up. But he underestimated Tang En's ability to sleep, how could such a slight movement wake him up? If you have anything, just say it. Don't look for me for small things, it's useless to look for me for big things. Tang En turned over and muttered to the guard. Lieutenant General Twain, 
Major General SDC is out there singled out a dozen generals. Go and have a look. Damn. When did it happen? Hearing Estes, Dunn jumped up from the bed, grabbed the guard's clothes and asked. Just now, Lt. Gen. Akina was leading a group of generals to fight Major General Estes. The guard pointed to the outside. He felt something was wrong when he saw Estes at a disadvantage, so he came to report to Tang En. Isn't the next match between Estes and Aokiji? Why are you fighting Akainu? Tang En was directly confused, but it didn't matter if he couldn't figure it out, he didn't think about it. Now that his wife was being surrounded and beaten, how could Tang En bear it? Poor Salino, copy me. Tang En picked up the yellow ape on the bed, randomly picked up a desk lamp and handed it to him, then quickly opened the door to help Estes. What happened? In a daze, someone stuffed a mixed object in his hand, and Huang Yuan was forced to open his eyes to look at the surrounding situation. Lieutenant General Kizaru, Major General Estes is fighting with Lieutenant General Akainu outside, and Lieutenant General Twain has already gone to help, he told you to go too. The guard opened his mouth and explained to the ignorant Huang Yuan. Akainu, Estes. Huang Yuan felt that he was a bit big-headed, how did these two fight? What about Aokiji? Estith didn't have a match with Aokiji, did he? Thinking of his plan, Huang Yuan was shocked, and immediately picked up his clothes and rushed to Iceland. Estes. I heard that you were beaten up, how come you didn't suffer? Liasos, go up and help. Everyone is a family. Don't let Estes suffer. A familiar voice suddenly came from Estith, who was telling Sengoku and others that you were too weak with a cold face. Everyone turned their heads to look at the source of the sound. Tang En's figure appeared in everyone's eyes. The voice just now came from him. At this moment, Tang En was dressed strangely. He was running here in pajamas and barefoot without shoes. What was even more discordant was that a brick had been buckled from nowhere in his hand. Twain. What are you? Seeing Tang En's outfit, Estes was puzzled. Estes, are you okay? I heard that you were beaten by Akainu and I rushed here. Tang En walked in and hurried to Estes with a concerned expression on his face. Seeing Estes I was unscathed, this time rest assured. Hearing this, Akazuki lowered his head, his face was a little bit uncomfortable, when did he lead someone to beat your wife? It was obviously your wife who beat us alone. And with the strength of Esdith, how can he be a person who will suffer? Don't worry, I just played with them. Knowing that Dunn cared so much about him, Esdith nodded shyly, a seductive blush appeared on his face. On the other side, Morgans, the president of the World Economic News, said to his excited opponent. Hurry up. Now the whole world is attracted by this terrifying general. I just managed to get the first-hand information about Esdith from the Navy. Hurry up and print it. Tomorrow I will increase the sales of the newspaper. Double. Then boss, what's the headline in tomorrow's newspaper? The strongest general, Estes. Morgan said without hesitation. It's fine. Tang and heaved a sigh of relief and patted his chest. Twain, I brought your clothes. At this time, a cloud of photons appeared in front of everyone, and then the photon condensed into the figure of the yellow ape. At this moment, the yellow ape was holding Tang En's coat and shoes in his hands. I'll just say it, but Akina dares to bully Esdish, let's have a fight. After Tang En got dressed, he stretched out his finger to the silent red dog with a dark face and lowered head and directly declared war. Why do you think that I brought a dozen people to beat her alone, instead of her alone beating a dozen of us? Being pointed at by Tang En, Akainu couldn't pretend to be a transparent person, so he could only pull the brim of his hat lower, and at the same time couldn't help complaining. Esdith besieged you. How can that be possible? I know Esdith. Although he is cruel to the enemy, he is very warm and generous to his colleagues. And you, Sakaski, are a bastard who only knows how to fight. Tang En took a step forward, 
intending to beat up the dog who framed his wife. Enthusiasm? Generous? Only know about fighting? Tang En, you said the opposite, right? To say that he likes to fight, Esdith said that no one dares to be the first. As for treating colleagues warmly and generously, there is one in the Navy, who is the opponent of SDC just now, and is currently being rescued in the hospital ship. Lieutenant General He and Huang Yuan, who were very skilled in raising energy, couldn't help but twitched their eyes. The rest of the people even had a mouthful of old blood in their hearts, and almost vomited blood to death. Seeing that Tang and didn't understand his wife's personality at all, Zhang Guo stepped forward and explained. Tang En, you can see what happened just now after watching the video. Don't you believe that we still don't believe in Artoria? She is your wife, and there is no way she will be framed. Halfway through, Zhang Guo was startled, remembering the days when he secretly read novels behind his parents' backs when he was a child, Arturia might really frame Esdith. After all, Gongdu is a common routine in novels. Estes, what happened just now? Tang En didn't care about what was wrong with the words of the Warring States period, and he didn't turn on any video, but looked at Estes. What Estes said in person is more important than something like a video. Twain, I just sparred with them, and it turned out that they were no match for me at all, especially that one named Sakaski, who kept his mouth so stubborn and finally asked me to save him. Fuck. It was really you who surrounded and beat them up. Tang En rubbed his nose, and heard Esdith's words, Akainu was almost killed by her just now, and stepped on the face of the Navy in front of the whole world's live broadcast, this is very troublesome. Am I taking them on a run to find a place to catch fish? Or take them to be pirates? As for asking Esdith to apologize, that's just overthinking and it wouldn't be in Tang En's consideration at all. The reason Tang En stayed in the Navy was entirely because he was too lazy to change units. After all, he knew from watching anime that although the Navy has many shortcomings, it still protects all peace-loving people in the world. As for pirates like Luffy, after all, they are a minority. Compared to handing over the future to One Piece, it is better to hand over the future to the Navy controlled by oneself. What? You actually ask me how to control the Navy? There is a salted fish summoning system. Really, you can succeed as long as you lie down. Twain, the marshal called me just now, saying that Wulioxing wants to talk to me. By the way, do you know what Wulioxing is? Then, Estes seemed to remember something, and said to Dunn. Five old stars. Everyone present was shocked by Esdith's words again, but it's normal to think about it again. After all, time and space are involved, and the strength is still a proper general level, and it's normal to be valued by the five old stars. Good guy, the five old stars are eyeing you. Tang En was also stunned when he heard the words, he didn't expect SDC to be so fierce, even the five old stars couldn't stand it anymore. Major General Estes are you sure this is what Marshal Kong said on the phone? Warring states couldn't believe his ears, he had never received such high treatment. General of the Warring States period, although SDC beat someone, it doesn't mean that even the five old stars will move out. Tang En frowned. Even so, he would not take away the things in Esdith's hands. Master, you still watch the video, you will know when the time comes. Seeing Tang En's appearance, Artoria, who understands people's hearts, opened her mouth and said. Okay, then I'll see how Esdish beat the 18 Akainu people alone. When Tang En mentioned it again, Akainu gritted his molars tightly. If he couldn't beat Estes, he would definitely give Tang En a good look. Tang En turned on the video bug, and Huang Yuan also came to his side. He didn't know what happened just now. On the screen, Estes beat Aokiji with a shocking blow, and then the referee declared Estes the winner. Tang En nodded, he didn't think Aokiji could survive this move either. A gleam of joy flashed in Huang Yuan's eyes blocked by the sunglasses. Immediately afterwards, 
Estes directly declared war on the entire navy, pressing Akainu and others to the ground and beating them. Is this unreasonable? Tang En was a good guy, but he didn't expect Estes to be so fierce, and even said that he didn't enjoy the fight. Huang Yuan was also surprised at first, and then realized that this is indeed something that Estes can do. In the end, Esters hit the puck from the sky again. When Tang En saw the video, he was a good guy. He didn't expect Estish to play so well. Huang Yuan had some accidents at the beginning and then returned to normal. He had fought against Estis, and he knew that this woman had such an unusual paranoid about fighting. Finally, Estith's Moko Botmo, which freezes time and space, awakens the memory of the oracle being kicked more than 100 feet. Freezing time and space, no wonder even light can't escape. Huang Yuan touched his face and now he could feel the swelling. It's no wonder that the five old stars will look for Estith, and now it's really famous all over the world. The entire naval competition has become a stage for Estith alone. Tang En also wanted to understand that not only did he not need to change units at all, but he could still fish with a high salary. Major General Estes, here comes Wu Liaoxing's phone bug. At this moment, a man in a suit and sunglasses handed over a strange-looking phone bug. Tang En took a look at the other party's attire. If nothing else, it should be organized by the spy agency CP. But I just don't know how much CP it is. Ding 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 ding. As soon as the phone was handed over to Estes, it began to vibrate. Tang En nodded and motioned for Estes to connect it. Hi. Is this Major General Estes? As soon as the connection was made, an old voice came from the other side of the phone. Although the voice was not loud, it was very powerful. It's me. Estes said flatly. Your Excellency Estes, Rear Admiral Estes is a rare talent in the Navy, and now he is only a Major General. There should be complaints, right? Your Excellency, I am serious. I have joined the Navy for less than half a year and I have not made any achievements. I have already risen rapidly to become a major general. Estes remained calm. You can understand. The voice on the phone was gratified, and then another voice appeared, and the face of the phone bug also changed. Major General Estes, what is your view on justice? As soon as this remark came out, pirates from all over the world stared at Estes in the picture, wanting to hear his answer, after all it is closely related to their lives. If it is the absolute justice of the warring states period, their life will definitely be difficult in the future, but if it is the justice of Zifa that does not kill, then, although this possibility is very low. My justice. Estes looked at the camera bug, she didn't think this kind of scene should be broadcast live. The CP member quickly understood what Estes meant, and quickly waved his hand and said, Major General Estes, this is what the five old stars mean. Then, Estes turned his gaze to Tang and again, his eyes flashed with the meaning of asking. At some point, she had already regarded Tang and as her husband, not the kind of man who met all her conditions and had a pure smile, but the kind of man who regarded Tang and as the backbone and centered on satisfying Tang and. One is that Tang and satisfies her, and the other is that she satisfies Tang and. It can be said that Tang En has already beaten the pig's foot in the original book for several blocks. The emotion in Estith's eyes was seen by everyone at once. Under the eyes of everyone, the most beautiful and strongest general of the navy looked at a man with awe and cute eyes, which was like a thousand years. Asshole. To be regarded as such by Estith. Mom, my goddess has fallen. The inspirational Navy and junior Navy soldiers in front of the camera bugs all over the world envied Tang En very much. Tang En was directly regarded as the public enemy of men by Estes. Although Estes, who was warlike before, made many pirates fear, but for those grassroots navies, Estes's powerful strength and overwhelming appearance have become the goddess of ice and snow in their hearts. The two live broadcast battles today have attracted a lot of brain-dead fans for her and this group of people is also the force that the world government wants to win over and integrate. 
it is precisely because the five old stars discovered the influence of esters that they personally went off to explain to A.I. Side. Why is Side still a major general now? Later, during the world conscription period, the first goal of many recruits who joined the navy was to challenge Dunn to rescue their goddess Esters. Because in the scene of the naval competition, Esdith's eyes must have been forced, otherwise what happened to the fearful eyes, what's with that cute expression? It must have been forced by Twain the Great Devil. And want to control a strong man like Esdish. Tang En must have used some indecent means. But at this moment, Tang En, who didn't know that the pot was fried outside, faced Esdith's eyes asking for advice, spread his hands, and said directly. Say what you think. The reason Tang En said this was because he knew that Esdish's nature should be very suitable for those in high positions. After all, in the world of slashing the crimson pupil, Esdish has proved himself to be a very good knife. In the world of pirates, Esdith should belong to the same kind of professional soldiers as Akainu, and it is the kind of navy that Wu Liaoxing likes most. Lieutenant General Tang En is right. According to what I think, the navy is inclusive. No matter what kind of justice, as long as you have a righteous heart, you can protect the world here. The original voice on the phone came again, still full of anger. I think in this world, the weak prey on the strong. If you want to survive as a navy, you have to become the strong. If you are not strong enough, you will be destroyed. Without strength, everything is lost. My favorite thing is fighting. Fight with the strong. Make yourself stronger. If you insist on asking me what justice is. Then my justice is the justice of the jungle. Dot. The face on the phone bug was silent. Although I knew from watching the video that the woman in front of me liked to challenge the strong, but now it seems that she not only likes it, it has clearly reached a point of madness. He is simply an S-rank battle maniac. At this moment, everyone understood what kind of person Esdith was a monster who regarded fighting as a necessity. After a few minutes, Wu Liaoxing digested Esdith's justice, and said again. Then what does His Excellency Estes think of the Navy? As the strongest weapon against pirates, the Navy should exert all its strength to completely bury the pirates. In that case, the Navy may suffer heavy losses, or even die in battle. Warring states can't stand it anymore. Although His Justice is the justice of the King's presence in the world, it is impossible for him to agree to compare the navy to the weapon of the world government. That can only show that they are too fragile. SDC responded firmly to the doubts of the warring states period, and at the same time said sharply, and I will avenge them. Haha, <laughs> it seems that your understanding of the navy is very deep and accurate. We can rest assured that the navy will have people like you in the future. After hearing Estes compare the navy to a weapon, the phone bug's face turned into a chrysanthemum, and he didn't even blame Sengoku for interrupting. Rear Admiral Estes is a rare talent in the Navy. Although he is now a Major General because of his seniority, this kind of strength is just that a Major General will inevitably make people gossip. I think it is better to be promoted to a Lieutenant General to contribute to justice. As for the question of military exploits, with the strength of Lieutenant General Estes, it will not take long to make up for it in the future. As soon as the voice in the phone bug sang, he promoted Esdith, completely disregarding the opinion of the Navy, and directly settled the matter. Esdith's promotion is no problem for Sengoku, but he can't accept Esdith's thinking. Navy is not a weapon. All the Dove generals were as silent as the Warring States period, but their favorability for Esdith dropped to freezing point. Twain Wake up quickly. Seeing that Tang En could fall asleep standing up, my king quickly reminded him. As soon as Tang En opened his eyes, he felt that there was something wrong with the surrounding atmosphere. The expression of Jean Guo, who was quite happy just now, looked like he had eaten a Riji. In addition, Akainu, who had been bowing his head in silence, suddenly smiled like a chrysanthemum. Poor Salano, do you know what happened just now? Tang En tugged at the sleeve of the three-meter-high yellow ape standing beside him in a daze. Hey! What's the matter? 
Why did I fall asleep again? Being pulled by Tang En, the bubble on the yellow ape's nose burst immediately, and it looked like he was just fishing. Good guy. You two are here to catch up on sleep. Art Uriya reluctantly went to Tang En's ear and told what happened just now. At the same time, my king also analyzed the current situation for Tang En. I see. After listening to my king's report, Tang En finally understood why the atmosphere changed after he took a nap. Didn't expect factional fighting within the navy. It's already so intense. Twain, what should we do next? Artoria also regards Tang En as the backbone, and all actions are centered on him. Since it's Estitha's idea, let her go. You are not my tools, and I have no ambitions. When you come to this world, everyone should have a good time. Tang En doesn't care, his wife is not a tool, as long as SDC doesn't poke the sky, he can play as he pleases. The doting wife and crazy demon Twain called online. I understand. There was a flash of understanding in my king's eyes. Ah! What do you understand? Tang En looked at Arturia in a daze, and told him intuitively that my king also wanted to play. In the field. After communicating with Estes, he unceremoniously praised Estes for his excellence, and the navy should learn from her. Just now Marshal Kong has formally appointed Major Estes as the deputy head of the G5 branch, with the rank of lieutenant general. Being a lieutenant general is not enough to make Estes a better contribution to justice. I think it's better to give Estes a nickname for the lieutenant general. Well, I think it's okay. After all, lieutenant general SDC has the strength of a general. It's not a violation to advance a little time. The five people in the phone worm began to discuss the next position of Estes. Tang En watched quietly from the side. It can be said that if the navy had no precedent, I am afraid that the five old stars would directly promote Estith to the rank of general just like Fujitora Green Bull. Lieutenant General Estes, what nickname do you like? Nickname? Just like my move, General Binglin, let's call him Lieutenant General Binglin. Okay, I hope Lieutenant General Estes will work hard to eliminate those ambitious people who endanger peace for the world government in the future. Wu Liaoxing mentioned not the navy but the world government, and its purpose is self-evident. It's natural. Estes nodded. Since Dunn gave her the power to follow her own heart, then play it big. After hearing Estes reply, Wu Liaoxing hung up the phone in satisfaction. Congratulations, Lieutenant General Estes. After the phone call, Sengoku stepped forward to congratulate Estes. Although he doesn't like Estith's concept of justice, Sengoku is happy for Estith's promotion. After all, for the current navy, it is the top priority to unite and deal with pirates. In addition, this is the appointment of the five old stars in the public. As the admiral of the navy, the warring states should also come to express his support, otherwise it will make people think that the two are at odds. Of course, the most important thing is the strength of Esdith, which is really terrifying. Warring States hasn't come up with any good solution to the trick of freezing time and space. If possible, Warring States didn't want to have an unhappiness with her. After communicating with Estes, Sengoku turned on the phone bug and announced. Today's two games have ended, and this small island is no longer able to compete. Tomorrow we will choose a new uninhabited island and we will notify everyone in advance. We played a total of two games today, and each game lasted about half a day. Now that the sun is about to set, it should naturally be over. In this way, everyone returned to Marin Fando by boat with their own thoughts. Jean Guo and he were sitting on the same boat. General he saw Jean Guo's expression of contemplation. As a friend for many years, he naturally knew what the other party was thinking, so he took the initiative to ask. Sengoku, are you thinking of Mokabatama? Sengoku nodded and said. That's right, the move involving time is too terrifying, and there must be countermeasures. Estitha's thinking really surprised me. Compared with protection, she seems to prefer fighting. Have you thought of a good way? 
Lieutenant General he nodded in support of Warring States' words. I don't have any good solutions for the time being, but in my opinion, there is absolutely no perfect ability in the world. The move of freezing time and space seems invincible, but there must be flaws. After finishing speaking, Jean Guo added a sentence in his heart, however, it is estimated that Estes himself or Tang and knew about this flaw. Early next morning. Newspapers made the first day of the game headlines. The topic is the strongest general, Estes. The attached picture shows the scene of Estes using the Moko Potmo with folded hands. Then began to introduce Estes' life and current position, Lt. Gen. Bing Lan. Of course, Tang En and Huang Yuan also had a lot of space, but the battle between the two men was directly covered up under the light of Estes' dash th where. Along with the newspaper was a certificate of commendation. Above is what the five old stars promised to give to Estes, promote Estes to the rank of lieutenant general, nicknamed Binglin. This Morgans. What kind of strongest general did you come up with? Warring states complained to Gang Gukong in the office. The strongest general is the strongest including major generals, lieutenant generals, and generals, although he is really not confident that he can defeat Esther S. But you can't say it either. Anyway, I am also an admiral, the future marshal. Okay, okay, my body is getting worse day by day, I don't think I can last long in the front line, and you won't be a general anytime soon. Gang Gukong patted Senguo on the shoulder and said a few words of comfort. Marshal Kong, please don't say that. Your body will definitely live longer than Garp and me. Warring States has worked under Steel Bone Kong for decades, and he is Kong's most trusted person, and the relationship between the two is extraordinary. I know my own body best. I was ready to sacrifice when I fought against Lonely Red. Steel Gu Kong's tone, his life has indeed gone through more than half. Dot. Warring States bowed his head in silence. This teacher he respected the most was indeed getting old. But you know what? Sengoku. I never worry about myself. I have survived until now and I am better than many people. Steel Gu Kong changed his tone and said. The only thing I worry about is the navy, and the people it protects. I can't sleep at night thinking about the fear of pirates on their faces. The navy is my life's painstaking effort, and I will hand it over to you now. You must guard her. Jean Guo looked up at Gang Gu Kong, and found that the other party's expression did not seem to be a joke, he was surprised and said. Marshal Kong, what do you mean? I ask you, can you keep her safe? Sora did not answer Sengoku's doubts, but continued with the previous question. I. Facing Kong's majesty, the majestic general of the Warring States period outside was a little nervous for a while. He could clearly feel that today's Marshal Kong is different from before. I ask you, can you keep her safe? At some point, Gang Gukong's face became extremely serious, and there was no trace of emotion on his old face. Warring states felt that his chest was overwhelmed by something, and at the same time, he had a strong fighting spirit, which was the pressure to fight. I can. Marshal Kong. I can defend the Navy. As long as I am alive, no one will be unscrupulous in the face of justice. Very well, from now on, you are the Admiral of the Navy. Steel Gu Kong picked up a letter of appointment from the table, handed it to Jean Guo, and walked out of the office alone. Only the warring states were left in place, the bright sunlight shines through the window on the head of the bed. The cry of seagulls can be heard from time to time. Afternoon time stands still in this house. Quiet became the main theme. Ding 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 ding. The sudden ringing of the phone bug disrupts the tranquility of the afternoon with its harsh noise. Sister, what is that voice? Hearing the sound of the phone bug, Rem jumped up from the bed, seeing that Tang and and the others were still sleeping, he breathed a sigh of relief. Moxie Moxie, I'm Lieutenant General Dunn's life assistant, Ram. What's the matter? Ram got out of bed with small movements and quickly, and connected to the phone in one go. 
Please inform Lt. Gen. Dunn to attend the meeting at the headquarters before dash o'clock this evening. This meeting is very important, so all the Lt. Generals in the Navy headquarters who have no missions must be present. Okay, I will notify Lt. Gen. Dunn. Ram turned off the phone and gave Ram a look. After receiving Ram's intention, Rem stretched out her small and cute right hand and made an okay gesture. Then quietly crawled to Tang En's side, and pulled Tang En's big hand from Estitha's body. What? Rem found that he couldn't move Tang En's palm. Since he couldn't pull it with one hand, Rem simply grabbed Tang En's big and small thumbs with both hands, straightened his legs like pulling seedlings out of dry land, and did it again. Why are you holding on so tightly? Sister, come and help me. After trying several times in different positions, Rem collapsed on the bed out of breath, and finally asked Ram for help. Sister, Mrs. Tang En is really perverted, even when he was asleep, he held on so tightly. Ram stood on tiptoe and came to the bed, looked at Tang En's palm which was as firm as Mount Tai, nodded and said. Rem, I also discovered that Mr. Tang En is really perverted. Dong Dong. Ram, Rem, open the door, I'm back. At this time, there was a knock on the door, and the owner of the sound was Artoria. My king doesn't have the habit of taking a nap. In her opinion, it's a waste of time. Therefore, when Tang En took a nap, she went to the beach to train herself. Sister Laya is more beautiful than this morning. Why did Sister Laya come back so soon? Ram and Rem opened the door, saw Artoria, smiled on their faces, and threw themselves into each other's arms. The relationship between Artoria and Sister Ram is very good, mainly because Estes is there to support you. After all, compared to Estes who thinks about how to torture you every day, Artoria is still normal. Better. Because I received a call from the headquarters, I thought Dunn would forget about it because he was sleeping, so I came back to wake him up. Artoria led Ram and Rem into the room with a smile on her face. Sister Laya, Rem told you a secret, don't be angry. Sister Laya, Ram also told you a secret, don't be angry when you hear it. Ram and Rem said in unison as if they suddenly thought of something. Then the two held Artoria's hands at the same time. Hey? I seldom get angry because of something. If you can make me angry, I would like to thank you for bringing joy to my life. There is a warm smile on my king's face, and a hint of doting flashes in his eyes, as if he can purify everything in the world. After living for so many years, she has seen many big scenes, and life and death are not rare. Is there anything I can't bear? My king thinks so. Woohoo! It's so touching. The mischievous and venomous Ram and Rem were directly transformed by the brilliance of our king, and they hugged each other cheek to cheek and shed tears of emotion. Just tell me if you have any secrets. Arturia separated the two, not understanding why they were crying so well. Rem, you should tell me. Ram, it's up to you. Ram and Rem held hands again, and whispered with each other, cheek to cheek. It made Arturia a little dumbfounded. In the end, after a few minutes of discussion, the two sisters decided to talk together after my king didn't want to wait any longer. Sister Laya, Lord Tang N likes big ones. Sister Laya, Lord Tang N likes big ones. Ram and Rem yelled together, their voices were as loud as a loudspeaker, even waking up Dun and Esdith who were taking a nap in the bedroom. What happened to you Ram? Why is it so loud outside? Bang! The bedroom door was opened, and Tang En and the two in pajamas came out from inside. Tang En's pajamas were very normal, very conservative, covering himself tightly from beginning to end. But Estes pajamas are completely different, the neckline on the chest is messy, it looks like it has been pulled by something, the proud figure is half exposed, and it looks unfathomable. I like big ones. Arturia froze in place then turned her gaze to Esdith's unfathomable, and looked down at her flat. My king's face, which was still cheerful, collapsed directly. What happened? 
seeing that Artoria's face suddenly became gloomy, and she clenched her fists as if she was going to hit someone, Tang En, who didn't know that Ram and Rem had tricked her, was stunned. Lai Chan, why are you in a bad mood? Tang En stretched out his hand to touch my king's stupid hair, and every time he used this trick, he always got miraculous results. Uh huh. Sure enough, when Tang En touched her body, Artoria let out a low moan, blushing and falling into Tang En's arms weakly. After finishing Artoria, Tang En turned his attention to Ram and Rim, the cute twin girls who always caused him trouble. Ram, Rim, don't you have anything to say? Tang En deliberately pretended to be vicious. My sister and I didn't say anything. Rem and I didn't say anything. Ram and Rem hugged each other, and began to talk whispering face to face again. Anyway, Lord Tang En won't punish Rem, it's fine if we don't admit it. Rem is right, and Ram also thinks so, it's fine if you don't admit it. Hearing the whispers between the two, a big well appeared on Tang En's forehead. Estes, I'll give you this for them, good guy. Tang En looked at his death beside him, originally intending to use his death to scare Ram and Rem, but at this moment his death as pajamas were a bit too much. This is too big. Didn't you do this? Estes gave Tang En a white look. As a soldier, she had a very light sleep and woke up before Ram and Rem got up, but seeing that Tang En hadn't woken up, she simply stayed with him. What did I do? Tang En looked at his hands and couldn't remember what happened when he went to bed before. Immediately afterwards, Tang En threw Artoria in his arms, why did he feel that my king's eyes seemed to be glowing red at this moment? 8 p.m. Tang En led Esdith with his left hand and Artoria with his right hand and came to the navy meeting room together. The matter of the afternoon was finally resolved after Tang En gave Arturia a long kiss for a century. As for Rem and Ram, each of them spanked ten times and stayed at home to clean the yard as a punishment. On the way Tang En went to the Navy conference room, he met the envious and admiring eyes of others, except for the person in front of him of course. Hey! Long time no see Tang En. In front of him, Huang Yuan, who was not awake, greeted Tang En with wretchedness in his eyes. The words made people speechless as soon as he opened his mouth. It was obviously a greeting, but there was a feeling of wretchedness. Where did you come from? Long time no see. We obviously met last night. Tang and yawned and lazily replied. Hee hee, you can't say that. As the saying goes, it's like three autumns without seeing each other. This is what you said in the training camp before, and now it's just in time. Huang Yuan showed a characteristic wretched smile on his face and Zozo's so -so's words in the original text were smeared with a wretched taste when he spit them out of his mouth. Poor Salino, sometimes I wonder if you are the one who ate the obscene fruit. Tang En teased the yellow ape unceremoniously. Pfft. Puff. Ha ha. Many passing generals laughed out loud when they heard Tang En's words, not daring to be intimidated by Huang Yuan's strength so they could only cover their mouths with their hands and try not to let themselves laugh out loud. After all, they are not Tang En, they are powerful and have a good relationship with Huang Yuan. Seeing the obvious smiles in the eyes of the people around him, even though their mouths were silent, it was a big-hearted yellow ape, so he couldn't help but twitched his eyes at this moment. Ahem, let's not talk about this. Huang Yuan coughed to cover up his embarrassment, and then changed the subject, Tang En, do you know why the meeting was held suddenly this time? I don't know, and I don't want to know. Tang En led the two of them into the conference room, found a corner seat at random, and planned to fish there. Ding, an excellent fishing spot has been detected, the conference room. Salted fish value plus one. Salted fish value plus two. Salted fish value plus three. Isn't this kind of meeting just for fishing? Listen to the sound of the salted fish value increasing in the system. Satisfied, Tang En took out the earplugs and eye mask from his clothes, and the eye mask was printed with an eye pattern very similar to his. This is Tang En's latest invention, 
just lay down on the armchair after preparing these two things. You can sleep peacefully during meetings. The yellow ape sitting next to Tang and looks straight. Hee <laughs> hee, what a talent. After speaking, he also closed his eyes and began to sleep. Although he didn't have Tang and's high technology, he couldn't lose in fishing. Especially not to lose to Twain. It wasn't long before I closed my eyes. Oh. Jean Guo slapped the table with a slap, and there was a loud bang which startled everyone. You, you two guys are actually sleeping during the meeting. This is the first time in the Warring States period to see such a scene, these two guys are really too salty. Damn. Huang Yuan was startled awake immediately, and cast a glance at Tang En. Seeing that Tang En was still as stable as Mount Tai and hadn't been affected in the slightest, he glanced at Zhang Guo again and found that the other party's eyes were on Tang En. Then, Huang Yuan closed his eyes slightly in peace of mind. Pora Salino, done, wake up. This is an important meeting. Important meeting. Warring States was furious, exuding a terrifying aura all over his body, the target was Tang En and Huang Yuan who were huddled in the corner and fished. Everyone's eyes turned to the corner along with Zhang Guo. Now the two of them didn't feel sleepy at all. Thinking of the Navy Model Worker Award that he gave Tang and earlier, Warring States was a little speechless. What about being a model worker? I bother. Warring States clenched their fists furiously, and a big well appeared on his forehead. But when he thought of what he promised Marshal Kong, he could only keep telling himself to calm down, calm down, and calm down again. They're just kids, just a little bit lazy. The Navy still needs them. It's okay. Please focus on the meeting in the future. After the discussion, the meeting can be dismissed. The following meeting officially begins. Thinking of the responsibility on his body, Warring State's anger dissipated quite a bit. He waved his hand, raised it high, and then lowered it gently. Don't pursue it anymore. The corner of Huang Yuan's mouth raised slightly, and he squinted for a while, that's great. It's better to be with Tang En, not only can you always learn new ways to catch fish, but you can always avoid them. Huang Yuan couldn't help but think of the good time when he and Tang En were fishing together in the training camp. See all are ready. Zhang Guo signaled to Lieutenant General He beside him, signaling that she could speak. The Roger Pirates are now in full swing, and the Golden Lion and Whitebeard are showing off their power in the New World. Marshal Kong is old enough to deal with the current situation. Therefore, according to the order of the world government, the Admiral Sengoku will take over as the Admiral of the Navy and lead the entire Navy to protect the people of the world. In addition, the world government will be promoted to the Commander-in-Chief of the whole army and go to marry Joya for his hard work. Dot. After Lieutenant General he finished speaking, the audience was completely silent, so quiet that one could even hear a needle drop on the ground. Huang Yuan and Tang En looked at each other subconsciously, and they both saw the surprise flashing in each other's eyes. The reason why Huang Yuan was surprised was the same as most of the people present. It is not a secret among the generals in the Warring States period to be promoted to marshal. The current situation is both unexpected and reasonable. After all, Everyone in the Sora headquarters knows that Marshal Sora's health is not getting better day by day, especially in the past six months, almost everything has been handled by Sengoku. Everyone was just surprised that this day came so quickly. Unlike Huang Yuan, Tang En was surprised to find that the plot in front of him was different from the original. In the Warring States period, it was clear that Roger was promoted to Admiral of the Navy after Roger was executed but now it is ahead of the global conscription. Seeing that everyone was silent, Jean Q. Ozhong said angrily, everyone has anything to say, you can speak, and if you have different opinions on this appointment, you can also raise it. Although the words of the Warring States period say so, this matter has already been approved by the world government, who dares to have a different opinion. Moreover, Sengoku has been working in the Navy for so many years, and he has won the hearts of the people. All the factions present basically admire him, 
and even now Akainu will give Sengoku face. Seeing that no one had any objections, Lt. He took the signal from warring states and said. After this naval competition is over, the marshal of the warring states period will begin. Since everyone has no questions, let's end this meeting. After a week, all lieutenant generals who have no missions will come to participate in the warring states period the inauguration ceremony. Now I announce that the meeting is adjourned. That night. On the way back from the conference room, the originally lazy Huang Yuan was completely sleepless. He looked around for opportunities to signal to Tang En, wanted to be alone with him, and had something to discuss with him. However, because Estes and Arteria have been inseparable from Tang En all the time, Tang En is in a hurry to go back to sleep with the big quilt and have a good rest. How can he pay attention to Huang Yuan, a shining and wretched man, so he did not see Huang Yuan little action? Seeing that all his hints on the road were ignored by Tang En, in the end Huang Yuan had no choice but to give up the idea of having a private chat tonight. Watching Tang En leave with the two beauties in his arms. Early next morning. The notification of the Navy has reached the hands of every participating general and the general who has no mission. The content of the notice is that the headquarters has selected a new uninhabited island, which is very suitable for the next competition, and the next competition will continue today. After receiving the notice, Artoria also set off with Tang En and others. Why did you bring Tang En? Because my king felt that it would be easy to cause trouble if the two of them stayed together, especially after knowing that Tang En had no resistance to Esther's figure yesterday, my king decided to ask Tang En to accompany her to set off today. The listless Tang En complained in his heart that women are really troublesome, and then set off with my king. As soon as he boarded the boat, Tang En found that the other generals on the same boat were also a little bit uninterested like him, and seemed not at all interested in today's battle. Tang En was right when he thought about it again. After all, today's game is Arturia vs Mamoto, Akainu vs T Dolphins. The outcome of these two battles has already been determined by looking at the situation. With my king's strength, as long as he is a little more serious, Dao to probably won't be able to last for a few minutes. The only thing to be concerned about is that Artoria will defeat Momota within a few moves, ending the fight. The same is true for the Red Dog on the other side. After all, the Tea Dolphin is almost forced to challenge him, and the strength of the two is not at the same level at all. Come to the new race island. Get off the boat. Tang and directly found a comfortable place and asked Ram and Rem to open their recliners and lie down comfortably on them. Around the small sunglasses, put on the sun umbrella, pick up the drink and start tasting. Estes quietly added ice to Tang En's drink from the sidelines. The four of them just watched the battle below. Seeing that Tang En started fishing again, Zhang Guo opened his mouth, but finally said nothing. I will endure. In a blink of an eye. Huang Yuan took out a reclining chair at some point, and began to sleep in a shady place just like Tang En. I can bear it. Seng Goku looked away, and found that Aokiji behind him had pulled off his blindfold at some point, and was standing still with his back against the wall. Fell asleep? Nima, you can sleep standing up. Ah, can't bear it. Warring states directly yelled at Tang En and Huang Yuan who were underground. Pora Salino, done. The camera bugs are all pointing at you. Can you look like a soldier? Upon hearing this, Tang En turned over. Immediately afterwards, Estes waved his hand, and three ice walls directly blocked everyone's eyes from where Tang En was. Huang Yuan, who was about to have a good sleep, rubbed his eyes and glanced in Tang En's direction. After seeing that Tang En used the ice wall to isolate himself from the outside world so that he could catch fish, Huang Yuan nodded and realized that he had learned another trick. Immediately afterwards, Huang Yuan used his own shiny fruit to make himself glow all over, and then closed his eyes, so that the camera bug couldn't look directly at him, and no one knew what he was doing. At least the orangutan thought so. You, you. A big hashtag appeared on Jean Guo's forehead, 
and he clenched his fists and looked angrily at the two people's positions. Forget it, Warring States, we don't have them in today's game, so let's go to sleep. Lieutenant General he opened his mouth to give the Warring States a step down. Tang An and Huang Yuan's salty fish personalities have changed for a day or two, and it is not so easy to change them. Zifa, steel bone empty, who doesn't want to correct them, but one is colder than the other, and these two salted fish are still as stable as old dogs. Understanding what he meant, Zhang Guo sighed, he could only accept such a subordinate. Seeing that Arturia and Mamoto had already entered the arena, Warring States began to announce today's game. I now announce that the match between Major General Artoria vs Lieutenant General Momotusa will begin now. In the field. A trace of cold sweat broke out on Momotu's forehead. The king in front of her put too much pressure on her, even if she was standing there, she couldn't look directly at him. All these fears come from Arturia's words, as Disha's strength is no less than mine. It didn't matter to Dao to before, but as DC's record of wearing Dash the day before yesterday was really terrifying. My king of the same level is standing in front of him, Momotu is already courageous enough to come to the challenge. What happened? Why don't you do it? Warring states outside the arena felt that something was wrong, obviously he had already started shouting, why didn't the two of them move at all, could it be that no one listened to what he said? It's normal if there is no movement. Listen to what those generals are discussing. Lieutenant General he signaled Jean Guo to pay attention to the discussion in the auditorium with his eyes, where he was talking about that the game would end in a few strokes. Look, why don't you do anything next? Do it. Who dares to do it? Peach Rabbit. If Dao Tu makes a move, it will basically declare the end of the game. Is this Arturia that strong? That's more than just strong, you haven't seen the scene where she split the sea with a sword yesterday afternoon on the coast, that is simply a sword god. Everyone in the auditorium directly answered the doubts of the warring states period. Why don't you draw your sword? Arturia looked at Dao Tu who was trembling slightly in front of her, and smiled to calm Dao Tu's emotions. I remember you said when Estes was under siege, her strength is not inferior to yours. How can you let me pull it out? Momotu's words directly shocked everyone present. Everyone knew that Artoria was very strong, but they didn't expect that she was at the same level as Estes. Everyone looked at Estes outside the court, and found that she was silent and acquiesced. Hateful. Why does such a beautiful and powerful person like Tang and Salty Fish? Are high-quality women's mate selection criteria all salted fish? Has the world changed? Everyone looked at the golden yellow ape, shook their heads and threw out the thought in their hearts. If salted fish were really so popular, it would be impossible for a top-ranked salted fish like Huang Yuan to have been a single dog for decades. The yellow ape who was squinting suddenly sneezed. Strange, why does it feel like someone is scolding me? Huang Yuan rubbed his nose, feeling sleepy, and closed his eyes again to sleep. My king in the field didn't make fun of Dao Tu, but stuck the holy sword on the ground and asked. Momotu, do you want to be a great swordsman? I once met a swordsman whose strength is almost the same as yours. He is the bloody knight swordsman MC under Kaido of the Beast's Pirates. Although you are both sword masters, I dare say that if the two of you duel, he will definitely win. Why? Tao Tu Tu subconsciously retorted. Both of them are sword masters, why is Arturia so sure that she will lose? It's not just Momotu who wants to know the answer, but also the other sailors present who like to use swords and the pirates in front of the screen who are targeting the big swordsman. Why is Arturia so sure that Momotu is not as good as Amsi? Do you want to know why? As if seeing what Momotu was thinking, Arturia looked directly into Momotu's eyes with a serious expression. Staring at this sharp gaze, Momoto persisted for a few seconds before unconsciously dodging, not daring to raise his eyes. Because he dared to show his sword against me. When he saw me with stronger sword skills, the first thing he thought of was not to run away, not to hide, and not to admit defeat, but to draw out his famous sword and attack me. 
No matter how powerful the opponent is, even if the opponent is a great swordsman, even if the opponent is the number one sword master in the world, the first thing he thinks of is to show his famous sword and try the sword with me. Estes has a saying that makes sense, challenge the strong until you become stronger. This is the gap between the two of you, and this is precisely the threshold for a great swordsman. If you don't even have this kind of determination, you should stop practicing swords. Momoto, what are you thinking? Didn't you take the initiative to challenge me to prove yourself? What are you afraid of now? Now, if you don't draw your sword, I will kill you. Arturia pulled out the holy sword stuck in the ground, pointed the blade at Momoto's forehead, and a terrifying murderous aura erupted from her body like a long sword piercing into her head. In the face of Arturia's murderous intent, Momoto felt that her life was completely out of her hands, and that Artoria could take it away as long as she stretched out her hand. Lieutenant General he leaned on the railing and yelled at Momoto in the arena with all his strength. Jun! Draw your sword! Dong dong, dong dong! Artoria walked into Dao step by step, and the knight's boots made a thumping sound on the hard ground. Facing the murderous Artoria, Momoto felt her heart beating non-stop, and subconsciously put her hand on her sword. Jinpira, why are you shaking? No, it's my hands that are shaking. When her finger touched Jinpira's cold sword, Momoto felt her sword shaking, and then realized that her hand was shaking. Boom, boom, boom. The two were not far away, and my king walked up to Dao to step by step, raised the holy sword expressionlessly, and pointed it at Dao to his neck. Call out! Yu Yuan! Peach Rabbit! The two voices came from Lieutenant General Crane and Lieutenant General T. Dolphin respectively. Clang! What? Arturia looked at Momo who had finally overcome her courage and pulled out Kim Pyro to resist. At this time, Dao to was sweating profusely and her body was still shaking slightly but it could be seen that her condition was much better now than before. Very good. A smile appeared on Arturia's face. Then swing the sword again. Everyone saw a golden light passing through Dao to his body. Then Arturia's figure appeared behind Momotusa, holding a sword in her hand. Boom! A hill behind Momoto collapsed. Immediately afterwards, Momoto looked back at Arturia with difficulty with a smile on his face. Thank you, Artoria. Immediately passed out under the shocked eyes of everyone. In the stands in the distance, Lieutenant General he smiled slightly, and looked at Artoria with friendliness and approval as if he had guessed something. Artoria, what did you do to Momoto? The tea dolphin who was close saw Dao to fall down, and hurried forward to help her up, but a figure stood in front of the tea dolphin. Akainu still has the face that everyone owes him 500 million. Momoto's battle is over, our battle should begin, are you ready? I'm in a hurry. You and I. The tea dolphin was about to be pissed off by the red dog, and now the fate of the peach rabbit is uncertain, and you came to me and told me that there was a competition. Momoto is fine, she just fainted, and Artoria taught her a lot just now, I guess you will only ask for trouble if you go. Akakan squinted at Tao Tuo who had been carried on a stretcher by the medical soldiers. He had practiced swords since he was a child, and he naturally knew how important Artoria's teaching to Tao Tuo was. Yay, I guess Tao Tuo will hack him afterwards. At the same time, in a bustling small town, a boy with a cross-shaped long sword on his back watched the live broadcast of the battle between Artoria and Momoji with the townspeople in the real square. Although everyone was surrounded by the screen, there was a half-meter isolation circle around the boy. People around him were unwilling to approach this boy with a strange long sword on his back, because the boy's eyes were too sharp. Not many people can meet their eyes. The young man doesn't care what people around him think of him, at this moment he is listening attentively to Arturia's teaching to Momoto. Thank you, Arturia. The boy said this to Artoria in front of the screen indifferently, then turned and left. Who is that kid? I don't know, but those eyes are really scary. And that sword, 
it doesn't look ordinary. Anyway, he has left our town now, it doesn't matter who he is. Right. Everyone nodded, full of disgust for that outsider, but fortunately the other party has left now. Seeing the gesture made by the medical soldier, the tea pig also knew that what Akakanu said was true, and Momotu had indeed just passed out. What do you want? Akainu. It's nothing, since Daotu has already lost, I want you to go to the infirmary and lie down. Akainu twisted his arms and strolled towards the tea fish, just like Arturia, and knocked the tea fish unconscious with just one punch. Then, under the surprised eyes of everyone, he walked towards Artoria who was watching Juan Muto leave. Major General Artoria, I want to challenge you. Arturia looked at Akainu who was full of fighting spirit in front of her, and said lightly. Sakaski, I remember that you have already lost to Estes before, so we shouldn't have to fight. Estes did beat me. I admit that she is stronger than me, but I don't think there will be two such strong people in the world, so I want to challenge you. Terrible heat erupted from Akainu's body, and his fighting spirit soared and the surrounding environment even stirred up waves of air because of its too strong momentum. Regarding Akainu's provocation, Artoria said with a calm face and a flat tone. Lieutenant General Akainu, I want to know why you challenged me. Akainu squinted at the hill in the distance, which was Estes who was adding ice to Tang and, then turned his gaze back to Artoria, and said in a deep voice. I have the same idea as Lieutenant General Estes on this point challenge the strong, and then become stronger. So, what is your purpose of becoming stronger? Arturia plunged the holy sword into the ground, and put her hands on the hilt. Without waiting for Akainu to answer, Artoria said directly. I've heard about you before. You once sacrificed a ship of the navy to complete the mission. Akainu obviously didn't expect Artoria to talk about this, but even if he talked about this, he was right to insist on his justice. In my opinion, war cannot be without casualties. For the sake of the lives of the majority, it is okay to sacrifice a few people. It is very cost-effective to exchange the sacrifice of a few people for victory. I used to think like you, and I used to do like you. Do you want to hear my story? Arturia's eyes were full of reminiscence and tenderness. At this moment, it is difficult to raise hostility. Everyone in the world wanted to know the past of this powerful female knight, and how a girl who looked so delicate grew up to what she is today. Of course. Akainu nodded as well. I was born in an island nation, Britain. Artoria looked up at the distant sky, as if she was looking at Great Britain in another world, the place she was willing to give everything for. At that time, Britain had internal and external troubles, rebels, pirates, enemy countries, princes, and wars and divisions. Coupled with the lack of shelter, the basic income was not protected, and the people lived in hardship. There is a legend in Britain that the person who can pull out the sword in the stone will become the new king of Britain. The moment I pulled out the sword in the stone, I already knew that Britain's demise was doomed. Why? Akainu asked what everyone wanted to know. In the face of my king's strength, it should not be difficult to protect any country. Because I... A trace of regret and regret flashed in Arturia's eyes. I have been raised as an ideal king since I was a child. I myself know how to protect the country. Arturia changed her voice, looked at Akainu and asked, But what kind of king is the real ideal king? Akainu didn't know how to answer and everyone present was also thinking about what kind of king is an ideal king. Artoria didn't want to get an answer from Akainu either, she just took a deep breath and said to herself, I like, love to see people's happy smiles, what I hope to see is everyone's joy. In order to achieve all this, all I can do is to make everything the best. So for the benefit of most people, I choose to give up the small village and claim the place. When Akainu heard this, his expression of indifference changed, and he understood what Artoria meant. Since that incident, he has always demanded himself as an absolute soldier, sacrificing a few for the benefit of the majority, and he has done this kind of thing. 
Others don't understand him, thinking that he disregards civilians and ordinary navies for his own military exploits, but in his heart the navies and the people of the world have always been the objects of his allegiance and dedication. Artoria's idea of governing the country exposed the strangeness of Akainu to everyone's eyes, and everyone also thought of Akainu's behavior style, and then suddenly realized. It turned out that this was the idea of Akainu. Many pirates in the New World who have dealt with Akainu have heard my king's words now and know why Akainu is so ruthless. You want to know, my ending. Artoria looked at Akainu indifferently in front of her. This man who was willing to sacrifice everything for the navy and the people was so similar to his former self. I guarantee the interests of the majority of people, but the majority of people think that this is not what people do. I think Lt. Gen. Hua Shayashin and others around you don't understand your actions against the Navy and civilians. Hearing Arturia mentioning herself, Hua Shayashin and the Hawks nodded. Although they were all Hawks, they were only for pirates and dangerous elements, and they also disagreed with Akainu's behavior. Akaji also saw the nodding of Hua Shayashin and others, and couldn't help but feel a little disappointed. The king dedicated everything to the people but the people couldn't understand such a perfect king. In the eyes of the people, such a perfect king can no longer be called a human being. When the foreign aggression is basically over, everyone no longer needs to worry about the survival of the country. I started to be feared by the people. The more perfect I am, the more painful it is. The more miserable I am, the richer the country will be. Britain perishes in my misery. After listening to Artoria's words, Akainu froze in place, as if he saw his future through Artoria's way. Akainu looked at his outstretched hands, which contained the blood of many pirates and the lives of civilians and marines. The navies are afraid of me. Is my justice wrong? Akainu thought of those classmates who were drifting away from him, those soldiers who feared him like a tiger, whether he would really go the way of Artoria again and destroy everything in the end. At the same time, Da Hai Shang outside the arena was also arguing endlessly because of Artoria's words, with some supporting and some not agreeing. Father, I don't understand how such a perfect king would be abandoned by the people, obviously everything she did was for them, and you are so strong, Daddy, we won't be afraid of you. Marco touched the back of his head and looked at Whitebeard in confusion, hoping to get an answer from him. Ku la la la. Whitebeard took a sip of wine, wiped his beard with his arm, and said with a smile. Because this is human nature. Human beings are very complicated, but we can't simply use violence to solve everything. As for you not being afraid of me, there is no reason for a child to be afraid of his father. In the field. Seeing that Akainu was hesitant, as if he was engaged in a complicated psychological struggle, Artoria said. I heard that you have always regarded thorough justice as your philosophy. But in my opinion, justice should be to understand people's hearts, and I will not do the thing of sacrificing a few people for the sake of the majority. If every navy should have its own idea of justice, then I think justice should be justice for the people. Justice for the people. As soon as my king said these words, all the civilians in front of the camera insects were severely attracted by Artoria. Because of these words, countless civilians began to support Artoria who joined the navy less than half a year ago. What a people's justice! Many dove generals outside the field nodded frequently when they heard Arturia's words, and looked at Artoria with friendly eyes, as if they had already regarded her as one of their own. I didn't expect that a person who joined the Navy for less than half a year would have such a deep understanding of justice. Arturia is a talent. Warring States and Lt. Gen. Crane on the high platform were also smiling, and they agreed with Arturia's idea very much. This kind of people's justice can almost be added to the recruit textbook as a creed. Tang En, who was basking in the sun, did not expect that my king could say such a thing, but my king is worthy of being my king and this speech ability directly stunned everyone. Your Excellency Artoria, even so, I will use my justice to the end. The future may be like what you said, but there may be another answer. If you don't try, you will admit defeat, 
which is not my style. Akainu took a deep breath, his eyes flashed a gleam, he became firm again, and the title of Artoria became an honorific. For this, Artoria didn't feel any disgust, but then said with an expectant smile on her face. In this case, then I will wait for you to prove yourself, maybe you can learn from my lesson and go another way. Akainu was silent for a while without speaking. Then he turned and left under the eyes of everyone. When passing the referee, his footsteps did not stop, but his mouth moved. The referee was taken aback when he heard Akainu's words, and then announced loudly. Lieutenant Admiral Akainu challenged Major General Arteria, and in the end Lieutenant Admiral Akainu conceded and declared defeat. The reason for Akainu to admit defeat is very simple. He himself knows that he can't beat Artoria now, and today he just wanted to test how big the gap is. But what he got from Artoria today was far more than what he wanted before. In this way, Arteria won the second game directly ahead of everyone. The rest of the game is easy. There were no Aokiji and Akainu in the Navy, and basically everyone else was not a one-shot enemy for Tang En. The lieutenant generals who were a little troublesome were all picked up by Estes and Artoria under the information of Kizaru. This road is just like Huang Yuan described in the branch, basically it is to lie down and win all the way. Therefore, apart from the existence of the Yellow Ape, the whole competition has almost become a performance for Tang En and his fiancé. After everyone watched the crushing game for a few days, time flies, and finally arrived at the finals. In the end, there were only four people left, Tang En, Artoria, Estes, and Yellow Ape. Today is the last day of the naval competition, and we still have four one in a million contestants left. Major General Thinking that today there will be a serious head-to-head -head game to watch the warring states, the mood is very good, and the tone has become cheerful. Are you finally going to see the battle of these people? I've been looking forward to it for a long time. Those games before were so bad, they weren't good at all. The seats in the auditorium were once again filled with generals. These days, the games were either crushed by the three of Tang En, or the scale of the battles was not large. Under the shadow of the previous battles at the level of destroying the island, it looked a bit like children fighting, so there were no games the navy doesn't come much at all. Today. Whether it is Estes, Artoria, or Tang En, the Yellow Ape is a top powerhouse, and finally he can see the battle like the first day. Now, future pirates, Wang Lufi's hometown Windmill Town. In front of the camera bug in the town square. There are already many civilians waiting for the live broadcast of today's finals, and many people have even prepared lunch and are ready to watch it all in one sitting. Who do you think is stronger? Estes or Artoria? Then there is no need to ask, it must be Estes, who can stop the freezing of time and space. I think Arturia might win. If anyone doesn't cheer for my king today, I will kill him. While everyone was talking, a man dressed as a bandit with a cross scar on his forehead came to the camera bug and dangled a big knife in front of everyone. Bandit, S.I.G. What are you doing here? People in the small town looked at the man in front of them in surprise, no one thought that Sig would appear here suddenly. Nonsense. Seeger still had the same stern look on his face, and said as it should be, today is the day of my king's finals, and I will definitely come to support. My king. Everyone present looked at each other in blank dismay, not understanding who the king Sig was talking about. Look at your stupidity. No wonder you can only be a farmer with no future. Of course my king is Artoria. She is the most perfect king. My idol. By the way. Seeger dug out his ears, his eyes wandering over the crowd, who supported Esdith just now. Stand up for me. The same scene appears all over the world. Many people cheered for their idols, and Arteria was the most popular among them because her words of justice for the people directly made her overtake Esther's and become the number one goddess in the navy. In the eyes of some strong men and pirates, the goddess of battle, Esdith, is more fragrant, decisive in killing, and preying on the weak. 
these are what the strong should have. Obviously, Bandit King is not on this list. Scenes of this kind of controversy appeared all over the world at the same time. It was even reported that two waves of pirates in a tavern had a direct fight because of different supporters. In the field, the four of Tang and looked at each other in blank dismay. If they were not more professional, they might not be able to help but laugh on the spot. From the perspective of outsiders, today may be a close contest, but my family knows their own affairs. Basically, the four people present are either playing a fake match or preparing to fight a fake match. None of them are here to work seriously. Seeing that the four of them were silent, Jean Guo thought that the four of them had begun to enter the state, so he said excitedly. The way we choose our opponents today is to use random draws to select matches. That is to say, Lt. Gen. Tang and and Lt. Gen. Huang Yuan will probably continue their first undecided battle. And Vice Admiral Estes will compete with Major Admiral Artoria. And, today's final winner will become one of the three future admirals. Admiral the last sentence of the Warring States period directly pushed the atmosphere to a climax. Although there had been news before that this competition was related to the future three generals, I didn't expect it to be so direct. Here are the names of the four of them, and the order of the competition is determined by the names I draw. In order to ensure fairness, Warring States personally reached out to draw lots. All eyes were on Sengoku's hand. I saw Jean Guo took out a note, in front of everyone, Jean Guo opened the note, saw the name inside and said loudly. First one, Polo Salino. Then, he pulled out a second note. His opponent is, Estes. Estes glanced at the yellow ape, and there was a flash of interest in his eyes, which made the yellow ape's forehead break out in cold sweat. I surrender. Huang Yuan took out a white cloth from nowhere then picked up a wooden stick from the ground to form a white flag, and waved it shamelessly. Admit defeat. Everyone was stunned. There was no one who conceded in the final, or this kind of surrender before the fight started. Warring States was even more angry. Just now he said that these four are the top powerhouses of the Navy, but Huang Yuan gave a French tradition. Huang Yuan, please explain to me clearly. Jean Guo turned his head and stared at Huang Yuan, clenched his fists tightly, his expression clearly wanted to give him a reasonable explanation, otherwise he would just punch him. Huang Yuan spread his hands with a bitter melon expression on his face, pretending to explain helplessly. If the opponent is someone else, I still have the confidence to fight, but it happens to be Estes. I can't be Lt. Gen. Estes' opponent. I also competed with her in the G5 branch three months ago. I lost badly. My light can't escape the freeze of time at all, so I will fight against her in this match. There is no need to compare. Poor Salino, even if you can't win, you have to try, just like Sokolsky. Jean Guo complained in his heart, although what Huang Yuan said was the truth, but you didn't even do a good job of acting like this. You simply didn't take him seriously. No, no, I don't want to waste Lt. Gen. Estes' time, and I haven't fully recovered from the injury I suffered with Lt. Gen. Twain before, so it's really not suitable for me to go to war. Huang Yuan was absolutely unwilling to go on stage and fight Estes. He knew that as long as he was on stage, with Estes' character, it was impossible for him to step down unscathed. Jean Guo twitched his eyes. He really underestimated how thick-skinned Huang Yuan was. But Huang Yuan did have the right to admit defeat, and the warring states had no choice but to announce. Since Lt. Gen. Huang Yuan has conceded, I will declare the winner of the first match, Estes. Then the second match will be Lt. Gen. Twain vs. Major Gen. Artoria. At the same time, the audience in front of the camera bug hadn't fully reacted yet, and everyone who was expecting Estetha's next performance complained dissatisfiedly. Is this the end? Why is this yellow ape so cowardly? I also want to see Lt. Gen. Estes use that trick. However, things have been settled, so the first game is indeed won by Estetha without a fight. 
What followed was the civil war of the Tang and family. Who do you think will win, Dun or Arturia? I think it's Arturia. After all, she was a king. Tang and must have listened to her. I also think that Arturia will win. After all, such a beautiful fiancé, if Tang and is serious, he will probably kneel on the washboard when he returns. A group of generals in the auditorium looked forward to the next battle with a mood of watching the excitement, and discussed Tang En's family status from time to time. Almost everyone didn't think that Tang En would be stronger than Artoria. Even if some people believed it, they didn't think Tang En would dare to attack Artoria. I think Twain will win, and it will be easy. Hearing this, everyone turned their eyes to the source of the sound and found that it was Dao to who had been watching the game quietly. Peach Rabbit, why do you say that? A surprising voice appeared, and Sakaski was the first one among the crowd to speak. I feel that Teacher Arturia's attitude towards Tang En is different from that of ordinary people. Mamotu tilted his head, as if recalling some scene. Teacher? The tea dolphin on the side obviously didn't know about it, and asked excitedly. Mamoto, when did Artoria become your teacher? Why didn't I know about it? Douta rolled her eyes, as if she was talking about why she should tell you. Akainu put one hand on the tea fish who wanted to continue talking, and continued to ask Mamoto. What kind of unusual law? Not to mention Akainu, all the generals present were very interested in this question, including Aokiji, who was wearing a blindfold also took off the blindfold and looked at Mamoto. There is no way, liking gossip is a common feature of human beings, and it cannot be avoided in any world. I don't know what to say, but Tang En's family status should be very high, at least for the teacher. I always feel that the teacher is too gentle with Lieutenant General Tang En. Tao Tutu didn't say anything behind it. It's unimaginable that Tang En, a salty fish like Polo Salino, can chase after a woman like teacher. Hehe, <laughs> don't underestimate salted fish. Lieutenant General Dautu. At some point, the figure of the yellow ape appeared beside Dautu, and he was smart enough to see Dautu's thoughts at a glance, and said to Dautu with a signature wretched smile on his face. Lieutenant General Huang Huang Yuan. There was a drop of cold sweat on Dautu's forehead, and a trace of nervousness flashed in his eyes. The yellow ape appeared so fast that it almost synchronized with her thoughts. This side of the brain just commented that the salted fish was not good, and the next moment the salted fish came to him and broke his mind. I surrender. In the arena, Artoria's voice sounded, it was not loud, but it shocked everyone. Major General Artoria, what's the matter with you? Warring states blushed and looked at my king, asking for a reasonable explanation. It's impossible for me to attack Tang En. Arturia didn't answer too much, and left the field after saying this, without leaving any extra explanations to Sengoku. Hey! Wait! Sengoku stepped forward to stop Arturia. But I didn't expect Ezdisha's voice to come from behind. Hehe, <laughs> I was really looking forward to playing with Arturia, but since the opponent is Tang En, then I also admit defeat. After finishing speaking, Ests didn't pay attention to warring states, and turned and left directly. Dot. The bewildered warring states was in chaos in the wind. There are also many people in the world who maintain the same expression as the warring states period, that is, they are dumbfounded. What about the final? What about the big fight? What about the big scene? Why did the battle end in five seconds? It seems that Lieutenant General Dautu is very accurate, it shouldn't be. Looking at what happened on the field, Huang Yuan glanced at Dautu intentionally or unintentionally, and kept looking at Dautu with an unnatural expression. Pora Salino, what are you looking at? The tea dolphin was angry, he had never seen Dautu like that. Hehe, he, I heard that Lieutenant General Dautu often ran to Lieutenant General Tang En's yard in recent days, I don't know. Huang Yuan showed a wretched smile on his face, and looked at Dao Tu very unworthy of a beating. Although he didn't say it clearly, anyone would think wrong with that wretched expression. You bastard! 
The tea dolphin was angry, but he had nothing to do with the yellow ape. To be honest, basically everyone present couldn't do anything about the yellow ape with the shiny fruit. Poor Salano, if you continue to spread rumors, I will send you to a military court. Dao Tu also frowned. Although she adores Artoria, she has no affection for others. In her heart, Arturia is the perfect king. Anyone who gets too close to her is against her. Insult. Hey. It's scary. Huang Yuan raised his hands and looked scared, but the obscenity flashing in his eyes made him look extremely mocking. Humph. Dao Tu snorted coldly, turned his head and ignored Huang Yuan. At this time in the field. Originally there were still five people left on the ground, only the angry and hopping Zhang Guo and Tang and with a lazy face. Marshal of the Warring States period, according to what you said, whoever wins can become a general, so I am a general now, right? Tang and scratched the back of his head, and asked the angry Warring States with a harmless look on his face. With that salty fish expression, he didn't realize that it was wrong to ask such a question in the current situation. Hearing this, Zhang Guo turned his head and glared at Tang and angrily, and then turned his gaze to the three of Artoria who had left. A big well appeared on their foreheads, and their faces were flushed with anger. General. I am Nima. This is the pit of me. It's been less than five seconds since the lottery was drawn. What do you make the doctors waiting on the hospital ship think? He originally wanted to use this as a lottery to mobilize everyone's enthusiasm, but who knew that the battle would end so quickly? Marshal of the Warring States period, don't be angry, anger is not good for your health, and you are getting old, so you probably won't be able to handle it anymore. It's really not possible, why don't I ask Artoria and the others to come back and fight twice before losing to me? Tang En stepped forward and patted Zhang Guo on the shoulder, with an expression that I was thinking of you, but what he said was painful in Zhang Guo's ears. Twain, you, 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 you. Zhang Guo's face was flushed, and Tang En was so angry that his legs went limp, and he passed out immediately. Oh. Don't blackmail people. I didn't touch you. Looking at Zhang Guo who fell on him. Tang and didn't expect Zhang Guo to be so casual that he fainted from anger. The doctors on the medical ship were shocked when they received the notification. They didn't understand why the one who fainted was the Warring States Marshal who hadn't played. That's it. On the day before the inauguration ceremony of Admiral Seng Goku, Tang and fainted from anger in front of the whole world's live broadcast. After sending Zhang Guo to the medical stretcher, Huang Yuan gave Tang and a thumbs up which seemed to mean more. You are great. Sister, did you see it? Lord Tang and actually made the Marshal of the Warring States faint. Lame, I saw it. Lord Tang and fainted Marshal of the Warring States period. The two lowly girls, Ram and Rem, forgot the punishment they received a few days ago, and started to speak harshly to Tang and again. You can't talk nonsense. The Marshal of the Warring States fainted because of his own physical problems. It has nothing to do with me. I told him to pay attention to his health and be less angry when he was older, but he didn't listen, and neither did I. Method Tang En spread his hands and explained to Ram, Rem and others with an innocent face. Including Kaido before, this is already the second person who was fainted by the Master's anger. Artoria looked at Estes beside her. Although this incident had something to do with them, it was mainly due to Tang En's last sentence that now the general gave the warring states a fatal blow. Ms. Artoria At this time, Mamoto came to Artoria and greeted her warmly. Lieutenant General Dautu, don't talk nonsense, I don't remember ever taking you as an apprentice. Arturia showed a helpless look, and without thinking about it, she directly refused Mamoto's use of the title of teacher. After that match, Dauto came to Tang En's house and said that he wanted to worship Artoria as his teacher. Of course, my king couldn't agree. After being rejected by the king again, Mamoto not only did not give up, but would come to pester the king whenever he had time in the next few days, 
asking the king to accept her as his apprentice, and outside, he also used Artoria as a student. Self-proclaimed. Teacher, just accept me as your student. I can do whatever you want me to do. Momotu held Artoria's hand and refused to let go. I have no plans to accept apprentices, you should find other people, such as Polo Salino, his sword skills are also good. Artoria directly diverted the disaster to the east, pulling the yellow monkey out as a shield. The yellow ape at the side waved his hands quickly when he heard the words, and refused. Farewell, I don't have enough time to sleep every day. How can I teach Lieutenant General Dautu? It's a mistake. Then, Huang Yuan showed his signature wretched smile, looked at Dao Tu and said, Actually, you can still find Tang En, his swordsmanship is much better than mine. In my heart, Artoria is the only teacher, and no one else can. Momotu rejected Artoria's reason without hesitation, and she ignored what Kizuru said as a joke about herself. After some exchanges, the naval competition ended in an anticlimactic manner but the goal of the competition had already been achieved. Polo Salino, Sakaski, Kuzan, Artoria and Est still had to win Tang En, who was finally victorious, has already told everyone that the sea is still ruled by the navy. Even if Roger becomes one piece, the navy is still as stable as Mount Tai and can hold down the world. That morning, after rushing to finish the finals, there was still some time before tomorrow's martial ceremony. Huang Yuan finally found an opportunity to express his thoughts on private communication to Tang En. Tang En nodded, knowing that Huang Yuan wanted to tell him his purpose. After all, the two of them had spoken first, and Huang Yuan wanted to tell him his plan after the competition. Huang Yuan took Tang En to the second floor of a shop, which was one of his properties, and was run by a trusted veteran. Twain, they. Arriving at the location, Huang Yuan calmly turned his head and glanced at the four Estes who were with Tang En, signaling Tang En to avoid suspicion. They are all my most important people, and they are absolutely trustworthy. Tang En rejected Huang Yuan's request without even thinking about it. In this world, he trusted the four of Artoria the most, and it was impossible to guard against Huang Yuan. Well, as long as Sakaski doesn't mind later, I have no problem. Seeing Tang En's insistence, Huang Yuan could only accept the expansion of the original three-person conversation to seven. Sakaski. Tang En was a little surprised, but quickly calmed down. After all, my king had told him before that the yellow monkey had a connection with the red dog, which was expected. Yes, Sakaski is also involved in this matter. Kiwi nodded. With a creak, the door was opened. The red dog who came in was obviously taken aback when he saw so many people in the room, and immediately put his body into a fighting posture, but then realized that these were people around Tang En, so he relaxed. Poor Salino, what's going on? You didn't tell me that so many people know about it. Akakan squinted at the yellow monkey and snorted coldly. Many people are powerful, and it's better to have more people. Huang Yuan smiled obscenely and then said to Tang En. Since everyone is here, let me just say it. Time flies, and it will soon be afternoon. Creak. The closed door on the second floor of the shop was pushed open. Tang En's figure was the first to walk out from the inside, and Estes and others followed behind Tang En, slowly walked out of the shop and returned to his residence. A few people did not speak along the way, because today's events must not be heard by others. Until after returning to the residence, Tang En checked the surroundings with knowledge and knowledge, and after confirming that no one was watching, he turned his head and sighed to the four people. I really didn't expect Polo Salino to have such a plan, but what he thinks does make sense. In the room just now, after Huang Yuan told Tang En his plan, it was only then that he understood the reason for what Huang Yuan had been doing these days. Because the tradition of the navy is that there can only be three generals in one class, and this year there are already three monster lieutenant generals. The positions of the three future generals have basically been determined, which is the same as the original book, 
consisting of Aokiji, Red Dog, and Yellow Monkey, to take charge. The three also happen to represent doves, hawks, and neutrals to achieve a balance among the three factions, which is beneficial to all parties. But no one thought that Twain Walker would appear on the way. It was just Twain alone. But Twain was surrounded by two general level powerhouses, Estes and Artoria. In the world of pirates, strength is the most important thing. This kind of power has already destined Tang En's rise, so the situation of the high level navy has changed a lot because of Tang En's rise. Tang En, Estes, and Artoria's three admiral level battle strengths are doomed to make it impossible for the navy to keep them in the position of lieutenant general. The clever Huang Yuan quickly realized that the situation was not good for him. Tang En and the others had to have one of them become a general to appease the three of them. Therefore, at this time, one of the three major lieutenant generals originally appointed by default had to go down. Among them, the Red Dog has the support of the world government, while the Blue Pheasant has the support of the Navy's doves, and the Yellow Monkey has the support of the deck chair. Moreover, Kizoru, who has been the Secretary of Steel Bone Kong for so many years, knows very well that although the future Marshal Sengoku is a hawk on the surface, he is actually a dove who supports Aokiji. Polo Salino Among the three, only Huang Yuan has no backer and no one to support him. Not only does he have no backer, but his former teacher Zifa has always been worried about him being a Lieutenant General in the headquarters. Lieutenant General Rusalino and the like. Originally, these words were innocuous. But this time may be fatal. In the future seen by Huang Yuan, the world government will give the three of Tang En a general position to appease the three of them, and this position is most likely for Tang En. To succeed the remaining two positions. In the end, the world government will allow Tang En to replace Huang Yuan as the new neutral faction of the navy, and let the navy reach a balance again. If you don't take the initiative to attack, Huang Yuan will be out. He will become a victim on Tang En's ascent. Find evidence to report King Zi. I didn't expect Huang Yuan to be able to think of this level, and even went to find the stain of Aokiji. It seems that he is not as lazy as I thought before. Lying on the bed, Estes thought of the plan that Huang Yuan proposed to let Tang En join, to report Aokiji together. His secretary is not in vain. It is still useful at critical moments. I want to hear your analysis on whether to join Huang Yuan. Tang En took a deep breath to calm down, and then began to calculate the success rate of the Yellow Ape project with a few people and where he would stand in this matter. His evidence is not painful or itchy. With them alone, it is difficult for the Yellow Monkey to overthrow the Green Pheasant, and the time of many stains is also far away from now and the higher authorities should not pursue it. My king found a comfortable place to sit down, and shook his head at Tang En. According to the current situation, she was not optimistic about Huang Yuan. Estes nodded, expressing his support for Artoria's opinion, and said to Tang En. I think we should wait and see. Whether this matter succeeds or fails, it will not affect us. Your position as a general is stable, and I, like Artoria, think that the possibility of Huang Yuan's failure is very high. Rem doesn't like that monkey face either. Ram doesn't like that monkey face either. Ram and Rem also stood up to join in the fun, their voices sounding cute in unison. Seeing that no one supported Huang Yuan, Tang En sighed lightly. To be honest, Kizuru's original plan was very good. First, let us eliminate Aokiji in the first match in this naval competition that will determine the future three generals. Then he used his position as Marshal Sora's secretary to look for Aokiji's stain. Finally, together with Akainu, report Aokiji. With such a three-stroke combo, even if Aokiji has the support of the Dove faction, it will be difficult for him to sit firmly in the highly competitive general position this time. But the problem is that the Yellow Monkey didn't find any major stains on Aokiji at all. Over the years, Aokiji has only some innocuous records such as being late. When Huang Yuan confessed to Tang En, Tang En was also stunned. 
he knew that Aokiji's original novel was also a water release general who was as famous as Huang Yuan, but he didn't expect him to be so self disciplined in the early stage. The reason why Huang Yuan told Tang and the plan was to get more help. If there was no problem in the second step, he would not have told Tang and so easily. Porus Alano, you are in danger this time. Tang and looked up at the distant sky. The history of this world has been changed because of him, and the three generals in the original book probably won't appear again. Tang and suddenly felt a sense of uneasiness in his heart. He was not used to this unexpected feeling. Originally, with the blessing of his past life memory, Tang and had always been able to handle it with ease but now this little butterfly of his own has set off a storm. The future is no longer controllable. Twain sighed. With Estes and Arturia, he is very strong, but he is not so strong as to be invincible. If he doesn't want to fall into the situation of being abandoned like the yellow monkey, he must become stronger, from the chosen one to the chosen one. This may seem difficult to others, but for Tang An, who has a salted fish summoning system, it is really a problem that can be easily solved by touching fish while sleeping. It is impossible to work part-time. This world has to be in your own hands, so that you can continue to fish with peace of mind. It's just started now, and we will go to a higher position in the future, such as the Admiral of the Navy, such as the Admiral of the Armed Forces, such as... When Tang An was thinking about his future path, his eyes suddenly went dark and he felt his face was covered by a soft mass. Twain, it's time for a nap. A shy voice sounded, and Tang and realized that it was Estes who hugged him into his arms. The next morning. There are many people in Malin Vatican. Not only high-level naval officials, but also world government officials and even reporters from various newspapers that are usually difficult to see. Jean Guo, who was stunned yesterday morning, finally got out of the hospital bed. After all, today is his title ceremony. Everyone has prepared for many days, and all newspapers have notified the time in advance. Even if it is not possible, it must be done. Early in the morning. Dunn also brought Estes and Arturia to attend the inauguration ceremony of the Warring States period. It seems that the Warring States period will be busy in the future. Looking at the three distinct groups in the auditorium in front of him, Tang En was a little bit dumbfounded. The three groups are the Hawk faction centered on the Red Dog, the Dove faction centered on the Blue Pheasant, and the Neutral faction who sits like the Yellow Monkey and loves no one. Lieutenant General Estes Major General Artoria As soon as Arturia and Estes arrived, Akainu and Aokiji came to greet them respectively. In their view, the justice of Estes and Artoria fit their ideals very well. Akainu feels that the justice of Estes is very suitable for their hawks, and with the strength of Estes, if they join them, they can make the originally weak hawks stand up instantly. Aokiji's character is not to take the initiative to win over others. He can get the support of most officers in the Navy because he is really good and often helps his colleagues. The reason why he came to find Arturia now was because he received a private order from the Warring States period. Warring States is very optimistic about Arturia's concept of justice. If the doves can be absorbed, even if the world government forces to intervene in the future, they will not dare to force the doves. Estes nodded to Akainu and said nothing. Lieutenant General Aokiji Arturia responded to Aokiji with etiquette. Lieutenant General Tang En, good morning. The two came in front of Tang En and greeted Tang En together. They were very polite. They knew that if they wanted to win over Estes and Artoria, Tang En had to nod. Otherwise, with Tang En's family status, their purpose today would probably be in vain. Seeing the two big men staring at him passionately, Tang En felt uncomfortable for a while and in the end he could only let Estes and the two of them do their thing. Arturia nodded to Tang En, and followed Aokiji to the pigeon camp. Surprisingly, Estes did not go with Akainu to the place where the hawks gathered, but walked directly to Sengoku who was still preparing for makeup in the audience. Warring States was a little surprised at first, then nodded after thinking for a while, 
as if giving Estith some promises. Akainu didn't feel very sad when he didn't make an appointment with Estith. After all, he also understood the character of Lieutenant General Binglin, worshipping the weak and the strong. Before his strength is not enough, there is little hope of wooing her. However, he did not give up either. After Estes abandoned him, he turned his gaze to Tang En again, which made Tang En's back feel chills. Lieutenant General Tang En, what is your justice? Akainu's deep voice sounded, the voice was not loud, but most of the people present were masters, and they could basically hear Akainu's inquiry. Many people looked at Tang En with interested expressions. Of the three, Estes, Artoria, and Twain, Twain's position is the most important. As long as he knows which side Twain's justice is on, the other two will probably follow along. What Akainu thought in his heart was that as long as Tang En supported him, Estish would probably be stable, and he could even win Artoria further. If these three steps can be successful, the hawks in the navy can completely crush the doves. My justice! Tang En rubbed his chin and raised his head to think about how to make up one for everyone on the spot. How about salted fish justice? Tang En shook his head, isn't it a bit too arrogant? Today is the big day for the warring states to take over as marshal, if he is so angry that he is hospitalized again, it will be troublesome. Finally, Tang En's expression became serious, looking at the red dog, he said slowly. My justice is, lazy justice. Tang En really couldn't imagine that he had any idea of justice to talk about. From the beginning to the end, he was a salted fish who just wanted to bask in the sun. Justice had nothing to do with salted fish. In desperation, he can only misappropriate and register the justice of the future Aokiji, and the lazy justice is also very suitable for him. Now only Akainu has clearly stated that his justice is absolute justice, and the rest of Aokiji and Kizumaru are still there is no statement. Now that Aokiji didn't say this, Twain stole it without hesitation. Twain is obviously more suitable for this lazy justice than Aokiji. Lazy justice. Even the serious-looking Akainu's eyes were twitching non-stop at the moment, this was the first time he had heard of this concept of justice. Do not. This is not a concept of justice at all. It's the concept of salted fish. For a moment, the newspaper reporters present rushed towards Tang and like a cat asking about the fishy smell and even the tall red dog was pushed aside. Lieutenant General Tang En, I am a reporter from the XXXX newspaper. I would like to ask why you regard your own justice as lazy justice. Lieutenant General Tang En, I am a reporter from the XXXX newspaper. I would like to ask a question. After winning the first place in the Navy competition yesterday, have you, Marshal of the Warring States period, fulfilled your promise? What is Lieutenant General Dunn's nickname for your general? Is there any discussion within the Navy? In an instant, several microphones were handed over, blocking Tang En's path, and many cameras were shooting at Tang En. What the hell? This is a short shot. Tang En had never seen such a scene. The reporters from the newspaper all had vicious expressions that wanted him to surrender and explain everything clearly. Ding! Congratulations to the host for discovering the top fishing scene the interview stage. Tang En, who was feeling troubled, was startled when he heard the system prompt sounding in his head. How to fish in this situation? And if I just fell asleep like this, wouldn't it be a little bad? So Tang En took out an earplug and an eye mask from his pocket, and there were eye patterns on the eye mask, which were lifelike. In front of everyone, Tang En found a wall, lay down on his back, covered his eye patch and earplugs. Snore. 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 In front of everyone, Tang En actually fell asleep directly. Jean Guo, who was putting on makeup in the distance, was chatting with Esdith, and found the movement here, and quickly asked the people around him. After knowing that Tang En was sleeping in front of the newspaper reporter, Jean Guo felt bad and quickly got up to think. Walk. But, it's all too late. After confirming that Tang En was asleep, 
the newspaper reporters directly turned their guns and stopped Zhang Guo. Marshal of the Warring States period, what do you think of your opponent's general fishing at your title ceremony? Marshal of the Warring States period, did you expect all this? Marshal of the Warring States period, I heard that you were fainted by Lieutenant General Tang and yesterday, and you are still working sick today. Is it true? The reporter was always talking nonchalantly and endlessly. With a series of cannonballs, even the battle-tested Warring States couldn't stand it. After a few perfunctory sentences, they directly found an opportunity and escaped. Salted fish value plus 5. Salted fish value plus 6. Salted fish value plus 1. What happened? Tang En, who was sleeping, heard the sudden drop in the growth rate of the salted fish in the system. He pulled off his blindfold and found that those troublesome reporters had already gone to pester the warring states period, and he was already safe. Then, Tang En came to the auditorium and planned to find a comfortable seat to sit, but his eyes just turned to the yellow ape sitting alone in the corner. Huang Yuan sat there with a dignified expression, living up to his former frivolity. Although he was covered by sunglasses, he could still see the unrest in his heart at the moment. Good morning, Polo Salino. Tang En stepped forward to greet Huang Yuan. Twain, what do you think about what happened yesterday? Seeing Tang En, Huang Yuan didn't care about Tang En's call, but went straight to the point. Now that Zhang Guo has succeeded as marshal, there is not much time left for him. Seeing that Huang Yuan was so nervous, Tang En came to the seat next to him and sat down. He also said directly, I thought about what happened yesterday, and I still think you have no chance of winning. Pora Salino, even if I join you and report together with you, I guess the hope is very slim. Not only will you not be able to become a general, but I will also fight against those doves. When Huang Yuan heard this, his heart turned cold. If Tang En didn't join him, it is estimated that Akainu might quit midway through this report. After all, it is not the time for the hawks and doves to directly impeach him. In that case, he would be abandoned. You are also out of luck, and your plan can't keep up with the changes. Besides, depending on your temperament, it doesn't matter which position you are in. Aren't lieutenant generals just fooling around? At most, the salary of the general is higher. Tang En patted the yellow monkey on the shoulder and signaled him to relax. This time he had exhausted all his personnel, but in the end he was defeated by the destiny. Who would have imagined that Aokiji had been in the army for so many years and even had a stain that could be dealt with? Nothing. Ugh. Huang Yuan sighed, curled up into a ball and leaned back on the chair in a somewhat decadent state. Tang En didn't feel well either. The last time he saw Huang Yuan like this was when he was taking the graduation exam together as students in the Zifa training camp. The content of that graduation exam was to fight Zifa, and then Zifa would rate the strength of each student, and finally report it to other generals, allowing them to choose their adjutants from these resumes. For the others, Zifa tried his best to give them the opportunity to show their strength, but when Tang En and Huang Yuan entered the field, Zifa directly punched them unconscious with all his strength. At that time, the yellow ape who was woken up from the ground looked like this, huddled together in a decadent state, feeling hopeless in life, it was Tang En who comforted him. Tang En knew that Kizora's strength was one of the best in that class, and only Akainu could compare with him, and even Tang En always thought that Akainu might not be Kizura's opponent. Aokiji is next. At that time, Although Tang En was also lazy, he often hung out with Huang Yuan. The so-called familiarity with Dash Tang poems could not write poems and he could chant, so his strength was also at the middle level in that batch of training camps. As a result, one of them was the last one and the other was the second last one. Let's put it this way, the combined assessment time of Tang En and Huang Yuan didn't exceed one second, and they didn't have a chance to perform at all fall on stage and become a laughing stock. Although the current Tang En is not the Tang En who used to hang out with Huang Yuan back then, he has inherited the memory of Tang En from before, and he can empathize with many things. 
he still values his friendship with Huang Yuan very much. Porasalano, do you remember when we were at Hyde's tavern? Tang En tried to encourage this friend who was pushed out just because of his lazy personality in a relaxed and heroic tone. The yellow ape didn't answer, and was still immersed in his own sadness. Porasalano, I'm asking you something. Tang En grabbed Huang Yuan's shoulder and forced Huang Yuan to answer his question. I didn't expect that you would hide your strength like me, and I didn't expect that your strength has reached this point. Huang Yuan, who was forced to cheer up, looked at Tang En helplessly, sighed and recalled the incident at the Hyde Tavern. In the early days of the training camp, Tang En and Huang Yuan made friends because of their common hobbies. At that time, Tang En didn't know that Huang Yuan was very strong. Until one time, Tang En and a group of classmates sneaked out while the instructor was not paying attention, and went to the Hyde Tavern next to the training camp to drink. I happened to meet the yellow monkey who also sneaked out. At that time, he didn't have a nickname yet, but he was just another salted fish in the training camp, Polo Salino. Cutting classes and sneaking around in the training camp from time to time is not an exception. After all, many people can't stand that kind of harsh training. Humans are not machines, so how can they operate around the clock, and they should always relax properly. Pora Salino, come together. Seeing Polo Salino staying alone in the corner, Dunn directly invited him to join their drinking party. In the training camp at that time, there was a very bad rule, that is, in order to enhance the students' aggressiveness and strength, the instructors would let the most powerful members of the team act as law enforcement officers to manage other students. There are a total of ten team members in the training camp. Ten law enforcement officers add up to form a ten-member law enforcement team, and the law enforcement team is the emperor's personal guard in the training camp. If the law enforcement officers like you, they can still turn a blind eye to your fishing, but if they hate you, it will be very uncomfortable. Unfortunately, the law enforcement officers hated Tang and very much. Every time they caught those who sneaked out, they would stare at Tang En. Moreover, it was always said that Tang En picked the head. The others were sneaked out with Tang En, and then let Tang En get beaten. And Zifa always believed in it and even ran more than 40 people in a training camp, and was able to be detained on Tang and after being caught. He, Twain, slept all day, and he didn't even have 40 names he had heard of. How could he ask more than 40 people to sneak away together? The problem is that Zifa actually believed it and gave Tang and a good beating and punishment. This time Dun and Polo Salino were halfway through the game, and the ten law enforcement officers who received the report came to arrest them again. There were more than a dozen people present at the table with Tang En, and they all ran away when they saw the law enforcement officers. When the law enforcement officers saw Tang En, they gave up arresting other people without saying a word, and only attacked Tang En. Tang En remembered very clearly that there were more than a dozen people at the table at that time, and only Polo Salino picked up a chair to help Tang and block the law enforcement officer's dagger. Tang and originally wanted to run away when he saw the law enforcement team, but he didn't expect Huang Yuan to rush out to protect himself, so he got angry and picked up the wine bottle to help. As a result, the two teamed up to beat all ten law enforcement officers to the ground, and became famous in the training camp ever since. You can hang out with me from now on, Tang En. After beating the law enforcement officer, the corner of Polo Salino's mouth raised, and he stretched out a hand to Tang En who was beside him. After that time, Tang En hung out with Polo Salino, and no student in the training camp dared to laugh at the two of them openly. It was only after that time that Tang En realized that the yellow ape was actually a rare natural ability user. After that time, Tang En began to hang out with the yellow ape learning fishing skills and training skills from each other. Although Tang En's talent is not as good as Huang Yuan's, it is much better than the average person. Otherwise, it would be impossible to enter the Zifa training camp for further studies. The only shortcoming of the two is that they like fishing. Under Huang Yuan's suggestion, Tang En's strength improved by leaps and bounds, 
and soon he could fight law enforcement officers with his own strength. Under his persecution, he finally found out why the law enforcement officers always troubled him. After leaving the training camp, they are basically officers, and the last ones are school level. Who knows if they will make a fortune in the future. You are the weakest, so I can only offend you. Back then, the entire training camp knew that as long as I was by my side, the law enforcement officers would only arrest me. Why did you rush forward? Tang An asked a sentence that his predecessor often asked Huang Yuan. Hey! You still remember that incident, don't take it to heart, I thought they were here to catch me, so I rushed up. In the past, Huang Yuan would always show a wretched smile on his face, and then reply him with this sentence. But now the yellow ape was silent for a while, and said in a heavy tone. I know that you, like me, can be a general in the future. Those short-sighted guys have no right to control you, and you were messing with me at that time, how could I not help you? That's it. Tang An frowned, looking at Huang Yuan with a teasing look in his eyes. Seeing Tang An like this, Huang Yuan looked a little unnatural, and finally lowered his head and said in a low voice. You are my only friend. At this time, a hand was stretched out in front of the lowered yellow ape. Follow me later, Polo Salino. The corner of Tang An's mouth turned up, just like Polo Salino who finished the law enforcement team back then. It's not over yet. Done. The corners of Huang Yuan's mouth also raised slightly, and he looked up and stared at his eyes, feeling that the person in front of him was so strange and so familiar. Poor Salino, it's over. Tang An didn't take back his hand, but looked directly into Huang Yuan's eyes and woke him up loudly. Polo Salino hesitated for a moment, his breathing became a little short, and his eyes were willing to meet Tang An's. He couldn't just admit his failure like this. Pora Salino. I say it again, play with me. Tang An still didn't take back his hand, but Huang Yuan obviously no longer had the previous intention of resisting. Well, if you fail this time, you have to cover me. Huang Yuan sighed, stretched out his hand to hold Tang An's hand, and held it tightly. Although the words in his mouth were if, his tone already gave up hope for success. Who says you're bound to fail? Tang An showed a smile on his face, and Huang Yuan was a little confused. Didn't you just say that? I mean you're over it, but now I'm not over it. You have a way. Huang Yuan was startled suddenly, and recognized the meaning of Tang An's words. I don't guarantee it will work. With a confident smile on Tang An's face, he remembered an incident in the original book. If this incident could appear in advance, it is estimated that Aokiji would make the same choice as the original book. Hey! I didn't expect to get along so well with you. Huang Yuan hammered Tang An's shoulder, and the original frowning look disappeared, and then showed a wretched smile. When I go back, you come to see me off. Seeing that there were more and more people around, and the ceremony of receiving titles in the Warring States period was about to begin, Tang An said to Huang Yuan meaningfully. It is good. Huang Yuan nodded. Although he was a little curious about Tang En's plan, it was obviously not a good time to talk about it. Welcome everyone to attend the martial awarding ceremony of Admiral Warring States, here I am only representing. Hi everyone, I'm Warring States. After putting on makeup, Warring States began to give his acceptance speech on the podium. After the title acceptance ceremony of the Warring States period began, Estes and Artoria also came to Tang En's side. Once they arrived at Tang En's side, Estes said directly. I heard that there is a place called Pushing City, which is dedicated to detaining the most vicious prisoners in the sea. I just told the Warring States that I really want to see it. Hearing Estes' explanation, Tang En understood why Zhang Guo had that expression this time. Propel City is hell for pirates, and dispatch for navy, but it is heaven for us death. Then, Tang An hesitated for a while, but decided to tell them about the yellow ape, anyway, they would know sooner or later. I just talked to Huang Yuan, 
and I decided to help him on the condition that he will join me in the future. But how can we help him? Artoria was a little puzzled. Several people thought about it last night and couldn't find a good solution. Even Tang En's promise to Huang Yuan didn't help. I have my own way of doing this. Tang En already had a solution in his mind, and this was related to the plot of the original book. Then why do we believe that Polo Salino will sincerely join us? We have no means of controlling him. My king, who understands people's hearts, raised a second question. A strong man like Huang Yuan looks at the whole sea and is a top strong man. He has already stood on the top of the world. No one can control a strong man at the general level. I have nothing against him. Tang En shook his head at my king, and then continued. But I know one thing, that is, if there is only one person in this world who can subdue Polo Salino, that person must be me, and it can only be me. Besides, I won't let him participate in important events in the future. It's just a ploy to stay in the Navy headquarters. After all, no one can believe it. One general will take refuge in another general. The speech on the Warring States period reached its climax, and the reporters frantically pressed the shutter. Our Navy must unite with sincerity, eliminate all pirates, and fight to protect justice. Fight to protect the people. Ding! Congratulations to the host for discovering the top place for fishing, leadership speech. Hearing the system's prompt, Tang En silently took out the eye mask and earplugs and put them on for himself. Then he lay down on the back of the chair and fell asleep directly. The title ceremony of Warring States lasted until noon. After the ceremony, Tang En led Estes and the others to resign from Warring States. Marshal of the Warring States period since the affairs of the headquarters are over, I'm going back to the G5 branch now. After all, Kaido is still wandering outside. If he attacks the branch and retaliates, I'm worried that the G5 branch will not be the opponent. The purpose of coming to Marin Vanduo this time has been achieved. Estes was promoted to lieutenant general, and Arturia probably didn't run away, and her general position should be the most recent thing. There is even the windfall of Huang Yuan. It can be said that this trip to the headquarters has exceeded the task, and the next step is to go back to the G5 branch. Lieutenant General Twain, you must take Kaido's matter to heart. In addition, I will also entrust you with the task of Estes and Artoria. I hope you can catch Kaido as soon as possible. If the Warring States period might have had such a thought for Twain before, then now he no longer expects Twain, a salty fish, to take the initiative to capture Kaido, as long as Twain can let Estes and the two of them take action, he will be satisfied. We'll bring Kaido back. Estes and Artoria nodded together. Catching Kaido is a gold medal. With this reason, they can almost travel around the world. Dunn likes to fish, and Estes and Artoria still want to learn more about this different world. Tang En, the couple who are also together, why is there such a big gap in life? Seeing Estes and Artoria express their views like this, the old man of the Warring States period burst into tears, and almost uttered a famous line from the Spring Festival Gala. After chatting for a while, Warring States insisted on sending Tang En aboard, but Tang En still had something to discuss with Huang Yuan, so he refused. And the Warring States period was indeed a bit busy, so I regretted it when I said it, and went down the donkey when I saw Tang and refused. After parting from Warring States, the five of Tang and came to the port, where the warship to pick Tang and back had been waiting for a long time. And on the bow of the warship, a gleaming golden figure condensed into shape, and shouted to Tang and from above. Twain, I'm here to see you off. Everyone on the warship was a little surprised by the appearance of Photon, but after knowing that it was Lieutenant General Huang Yuan who was bidding farewell to Tang En, the generals went about their own business. Poor Salino, there is a good bottle of wine hidden in my bedroom. Since you are here, I will take you to taste it. Tang En gave Estes and the others a look, then smiled and said to the yellow monkey. I can't ask for it. The yellow ape once again turned into a photon and condensed beside Tang En. 
The two walked together, but whether it was intentional or not, the yellow ape was always a shoulder distance behind Tang En. Coming to the bedroom, Tang En reached out and closed the door. Pora Salano, you have been a secretary for so many years, you should know about O'Hara Island, please. O'Hara Island. Yellow Ape frowned, rubbing his chin and thinking carefully about O'Hara Island in his mind. It is the island of O'Hara with the Tree of Omniscience, the holy land of countless historians, where many scholars are studying history and literature. Oh! I remembered that O'Hara Island seems to have sent many scholars to various parts of the world to publicize their great breakthrough in the study of history. After Tang En's reminder, Huang Yuan slapped his head and remembered the matter about O'Hara Island. Do you know where they are now? Dunn continued to ask. I've only seen people report this because things are uncertain and O'Hara's scholars are a treasure of humanity all over the world, so the Navy hasn't taken action against them so far. Huang Yuan thought for a while, then shook his head and said. Then there is no problem. Tang En remembered that the O'Hara Island incident in the original book was approached by the Navy and the CP organization a year and a half after Roger was executed. Hearing what Huang Yuan said, Tang En knew that this matter was the same as the original book, and there was no time change at present. Thinking of this, Tang En showed a smile in his eyes. Ape, you don't know, those scholars in O'Hara Island have been studying blanks for 100 years, and have made great breakthroughs. The 100 years of research disappearing, that is a death penalty that is explicitly prohibited by the world government. How bold they are! Huang Yuan was also a little surprised that these scholars dared to violate the laws of the world government, and it was the most serious one. Then the yellow ape sighed again, this O'Hara Island will probably be targeted by the world government soon. Tang En nodded and agreed with Huang Yuan's statement. In the original book, O'Hara did pay a price for their actions, and it was an unimaginable price. Except for Robin who was let go by Aokiji. Not a single one alive. But what does it have to do with us? Huang Yuan scratched the back of his head, not understanding why Tang En suddenly mentioned O'Hara. Isn't the world government suspicious? I want you to go directly to the world government to report the scholars on O'Hara Island, and report that they have been studying ancient weapons and disappearing for 100 years, and have made great breakthroughs. Tang En looked at Huang Yuan with a serious expression, and said in a deep voice. And then, Huang Yuan couldn't understand Tang En's thoughts even more. Then, you have to ask Aokiji's best friend, Lieutenant General Soro, to capture the members of the scholar group who have gone to various parts of the world. Remember to let Soro capture them himself. Tang En stared at Huang Yuan's eyes face to face, his domineering sideways leak made Huang Yuan dare not question it. Then, without waiting for Huang Yuan to speak, he continued. For this kind of incorrect thing, dovish people who are not firm will be soft. But Aokiji will not be soft. Huang Yuan spread his hands and replied. Tang En nodded and said. Aokiji will not be soft on these scholars, but he will be soft on his friends. Sorrow is his best friend and now his only weakness. Compared to Aokiji, sorrow is easier to deal with. Soro is Aokiji's best friend, it's not difficult to tear him down. Hearing this, Huang Yuan suddenly became enlightened. To tell the truth, he always felt that his intelligence was superior to ordinary people, so he could stand aloof in the fierce naval faction struggle. But today, it seems that Tang En is many times more powerful than him, and he can get a glimpse of it just by one possible thing, and suddenly come up with such a clever plan. It's too early to be unhappy, report, loss a euro into the water, pull the green pheasant into the water, every step can't be wrong, once you make a mistake, it's very difficult for you to have another chance unless the green pheasant. Seeing Huang Yuan's happy expression, Tang En patted him on the shoulder pretending to be deep, and educated him like a master teaching Xiaobai. I see. Hearing Tang En's reminder, Huang Yuan's face immediately returned to normal. At this moment, he had put himself on Tang En's side. Things have been discussed. 
Tang En could only say sorry to the residents of O'Hara Island in his heart. Anyway, this thing will happen in the future if it doesn't happen now, it's better to help yourself. The big deal is that when I meet the Straw Hat Pirates in the future, I will release the water and touch the fish. Huang Yuan didn't stay on Tang En's boat for long, and when he reached a supply point, he let Huang Yuan disembark. When leaving, Huang Yuan also assured Tang En that he would finish the task well, even if he failed, he would not change their agreement. Tang En understood the meaning of what Huang Yuan said. It meant that he would completely mess with him in the future. After returning to the G5 branch, the five were warmly welcomed by the soldiers, especially Estes and Arturia, who had become famous in the Navy Dabi, had become the collective idols of the branch Navy. Master Estes, I have already said that you are definitely better than that Aokiji. Brother Altai still doesn't believe me. A young man in the crowd was shouting to Estes, who was getting off the boat, and beside him was a young man who bowed his head and said nothing. Estes, who was disembarking, heard this and said in an unquestionable tone. Of course. A mere green pheasant is not worthy to be compared with me. Let's not talk about Aokiji alone, even if the three lieutenant generals Akazuki, Kizuru and Aokiji go together, they will still be defeated by me. As soon as Esdith said these domineering words, the navy present once again burst into thunderous applause. Master Artoria. Look this way. Many people in the audience greeted my king, just begging my king to look at her. I saw. Arturia also greeted the navy over there with a smile. Seeing this scene, Tang En felt a pain in his heart. Why is there no beautiful woman to welcome me? I'm number one in the navy competition. Sister, Mr. Tang En seems to be jealous of others, the kind of people who fight fake matches all the time to fish for life also want to be welcomed. Rem, I also saw that Lord Tang En is jealous of others. How can a person who sleeps all day and fights fake matches be welcomed? Lom and Rem leaned up behind Tang En's back to talk whisper. A big tic-tac-toe appeared on Tang En's forehead, and he stretched his hands behind him, lifting up the two poisonous sisters, Ram and Rem, who had spoken ill of him. Tang En made a vicious and angry expression, and frightened the two of them. I seem to have heard just now, you two are saying that my first one is wet. No, Ram didn't say anything. No, Ram didn't say that. Ram and Rem lowered their heads and covered their mouths, just like children who were caught stealing candy and adults would not know what they ate as long as they covered their mouths. Time flies by slowly. In the blink of an eye, Twain had been fishing in the G5 branch for more than a month and because nothing major happened during that time, the salted fish value rose very slowly. After all, there were Tang En and three people in the G5 branch, and no one who was not open-eyed would dare to seek death to provoke the G5 branch guarded by the three general-level powerhouses. Upon waking up, Tang En realized that he hadn't checked how much savings he had for a long time, so he opened the personal panel. Host, Dunwalker. Identity. Vice Admiral. Age, 26. Abilities, Armed Color Max, Knowledge Color Max, Swordsmanship Max. Salted Fish Value, 360. Looking at the value of the salted fish in his hand, Tang En couldn't help feeling that he could really be invincible while lying down. It took 100 points to summon Ram and Rem last time, and another 100 points to copy the sword technique of the Yellow Ape and now there are more than 300 points left, not falling but rising. More than 300 salted fish points can copy the ability three times. Now besides the domineering look, what Tang En wants most is all kinds of powerful devil fruit abilities. System, if I copy the devil fruit ability, will there be a flaw that I can't touch water, and can I copy multiple devil fruit abilities? One of the reasons Tang En has not copied the fruit ability is that he has not encountered a good fruit, but the most important thing is that he still does not know whether he will be as afraid of water as other ability users after copying the devil fruit ability. If this is the case, then duplicating the ability of the devil fruit is not worth the loss for Tang En. System, it's time to wake up. 
you've been asleep for almost two months. I want to complain about you to the Consumer Association. After repeatedly calling the system and getting no response, Tang En could only temporarily give up this plan. Let's talk about it when the system wakes up next time. Humph! You nasty salted fish system! Tang En didn't expect that after being stunned by salted fish, Zhang Guo would be defeated by his own system. If Zhang Guo knew that Tang En would one day be angry because others were too salty fish, I don't know if he would wake up laughing in the middle of the night. If that's the case, let's summon a new character first. Tang En didn't dare to copy the Devil Fruit's ability casually without getting an accurate answer from the system, but he must spend so much money saved. So Tang En found the system summon page by himself. Then there is the old process. Pay and snap your fingers. Start calling. Then. A brown summoning door appeared in front of Tang En. Sister, Lord Tang En seems to be calling Lolita again, what a perverted uncle. Rem, I've also seen Lord Tang En always looking at us wretchedly, he's so perverted. Seeing this familiar scene, Ram and Rem next to Tang En began to whisper again. Tang En, who was originally focused on the summoning gate and was expecting some new characters, almost spit out a mouthful of old blood. Tang En pretended to be vicious and glared at Ram and Rim. Arrogant Lord Tang En, just a little bit. Arrogant Lord Tang En, just a little bit. Unexpectedly, Lam and Lame were completely unafraid of Tang En's move. Facing Tang En's fierce expression, the two taunted Tang En with their sweet tongues. Tang En snorted, hugged the two of them in his arms, and then raised the corner of his mouth slightly. It seems that today I have to give each of you a hard 40 blow. This time Tang En didn't just talk about it, but directly put the upper body of the most vicious Rem on his lap, and raised his right hand to punish her little ass. Master Tang En is a pervert. He even wanted to peek at Rem's underwear. Ram pulled Rem back and guarded him like a hen guarding its food, looking at Tang En vigilantly. Like a wolf. I rub. It was discovered. Wrong, I was misunderstood. Tang En looked at Ram who looked like a wolf guard and Rem who was steaming with a sore face. As for me? You are all my little maids, so I can do whatever I want and still have to find this reason? I said Ram, you don't have to look at me like a wolf guard, you are my personal maid and fiancé. The meaning of Tang En's words is self-evident. That is to say, everyone is a family, and I can do anything. He he, Master Tang En is indeed a pervert. He can look at Lai Mu's underwear openly, but he just wants to find a reason to peek. It's okay if Tang En didn't say anything, but once he said it, he immediately confirmed his perverted reputation. Got it. I can't escape my perverted reputation with Ram and Rim. Hey. It's really hopeless to have such two superb poisonous tongue sisters and mates at the booth. Here Tang En also wants to remind those two-dimensional lovers in the previous life, don't let Ram and Rem be mates if you are not thick-skinned, otherwise they will really piss you off. Where is the perverted uncle who likes Loli? A girl about 14 years old, with shoulder-length brown hair, brown pupils, unyielding eyes and a pretty face even without makeup, walked out of the summoning door. Tang En was stunned when he saw the short-haired girl in front of him, why is there another Loli here? This time I really fell into the Yellow River and couldn't clean it up. Congratulations to the host for successfully summoning. Character, Misaka Mikato. Loyalty, Max. Favorability, Max. Indigenizing identity for Misaka Mikato. Choose success, be the host's fiancé. We are localizing Misaka Mikato's strength. Strength, General. Ability. Electromagnetic Ability User, Knowledgeable Max Misaka Mikato Tang En did not expect that the one summoned this time turned out to be the strongest electric shocker in Academy City, Toki Wada's trump card who could manipulate a billion volts of high voltage current, electromagnetic waves and magnetism at will. The sister of the strongest invincible Denjiki princess. Good guy. Can fight and be cute. 
much better than Ram and Rim, too poisonous lowly. Sister, Lord Tang and really seems to have summoned a lowly, so perverted. Don't be afraid, Rim, sister will protect you. Lom and Lame were talking endlessly, and they almost named Tang and as that perverted uncle. Twain, you are that perverted uncle. Really? I already exist, but you still go to provoke others. Do you think I'm not beautiful enough? The tea-haired girl grabbed Tang En's cuff and complained frantically. Flat-chested girl, stop. My sister and I came here first. Yes. Rem and I came here first, you have to be behind us. It doesn't matter if Misaka Mikato complains to Tang En, but I don't need to talk about Rem and Rem if I have something to say. All of a sudden, Rem was no longer shy, and threw herself into Tang En's arms, squeezing Misaka Mikato's hand away. Ram also blocked Tang En and Misaka Mikato angrily, and they couldn't pretend that they didn't hear the words of Ram and Rim. I helped you two teach perverts a lesson, and you actually deal with me together. Sister Pao also has a character of not admitting defeat, and directly argued with Ram and Rim. Rem doesn't want your help? You better take care of yourself. Lam is too, I don't need the help of you, a flat-chested girl. Ram and Rem aimed their poisonous tongues at Misaka Mikato, and fired directly at the weakest chest line of Baoja. Flat chest. It's unforgivable. Misaka Mikato clenched her small fists, a big well appeared on her forehead, and electric currents flashed continuously on her body, making her look very scary. Bang, bang, bang. The drink bottle next to Tang En's chair was smashed by the electric current inadvertently emitted by Miss Pao when she was angry, and the happy water splashed directly on Tang En's body. Tang En looked at Misaka Mikato who was leaking electricity with a dazed expression. Why did she suddenly become a Shura battlefield? Do you have to kiss again? Isn't this a bit bad? After all, these people are all Lolitas. Fortunately, Ram and Rem are not young but their bodies are Lolitas. Sister Pao is a real junior high school student, only 14 years old. If he really made a move, Tang En was still a little afraid that the god of River Crab would come out and pinch him with big pliers. Thinking of this, Tang En got up from the bed, hugged Misaka Mikato into his arms, and then embraced Ram and Rem who were about to cry, regardless of Misaka Mikato's struggle. Fortunately, the three of them are Lolita otherwise Tang En's arms really wouldn't be able to accommodate them together. After hugging the three of them into his arms, Tang En did not move but looked at the three of them calmly. Looking at each other, Misaka Mikato gradually revealed her true nature under the influence of her favorability Max after struggling at the beginning, and her originally arrogant face turned red. Ram and Rem also trembled slightly and stopped crying, bowing their heads shyly and not speaking. Seeing that the three of them were not moving around, Tang En knew that he had already suppressed the three of them, and now it was the last step, as long as this step was completed, the problem would be solved. Budget Dun said in a gentle tone. Sister Misaka, Ram, and Rem, you are all my wings, I can't fly without anyone, so please don't say such nasty words anymore. But, don't they all have a pair of wings? There are three of us here. Rem whispered to Ram in Tang En's arms. Rem's voice was really low this time. But Misaka Mikato's electromagnetic gun has been localized into the top-level knowledgeable color of Thor Enelo, and Twain's knowledgeable color is also Max. Dot. Tang En twitched the corner of his mouth, and found that the three of them were looking at him, wanting to know the answer to Rem's question from his mouth. For a while, the atmosphere was a little awkward. Boom boom boom. Just then, there was a rapid knock on the door. Who is it? Ever since the government affairs were handed over to Arturia and the catching of pirates was handed over to Estes, Dunn hadn't been disturbed by anyone for more than a month. Master Tang En, just received the news that members of the Big Mom pirates have entered the sea boundary of our branch. The current situation is unknown. Lord Artoria asked me to ask if you should take action against the Big Mom Pirates. The visitor finished explaining the matter in a few words, 
and then discovered that Tang An had an extra young girl with tea hair. Although it was a bit strange, he was not qualified to ask this matter. Big Mom Pirates? Pirates don't sound like a good thing. Misaka Mikato has a very sense of justice, and when she hears something like this pirate group, she directly classifies it as a villain. Is there any ant among the people who crossed the line this time? Tang An asked what he was most concerned about. If the ant also came, the problem would be bigger. Although the ant at this time is not as good as in the future, she is already a real general. If she really wants to win her, it is estimated that two people will be sent there. Report to Lord Dunn that there were three ships that crossed the border this time, and no ant was found on board. However, there was one of the four desert generals on board the patrol team, the biscuit minister, Charlotte Cracker. If it's just a four-star general, then Sister Misaka can easily solve it. Tang En looked at Misaka Mikato, who was eager to try and knew that a strong sense of justice had been ignited in her heart. Twain, leave them to me. I'm the best at dealing with villains. Sure enough, before Tang En could speak, Misaka Mikato volunteered to find trouble with the Big Mom Pirates. Okay, no matter what they want to do, even if they come to fish, we can't let him succeed. Tang En nodded, since Misaka Mikato wanted to punish the evil and promote the good then go for fun. Anyway, with her strength, it is impossible to encounter any trouble in the sea, unless she goes to the upright and mature blonde version of Whitebeard to fight one-on-one. -on -one. Master Tang En, who is this? Seeing that Tang En sent a new person to trouble the Big Mom Pirates, the soldiers knew that this must be another strong man. Eh? How could Tang En have thought that the soldier still had such skills? Wouldn't it be a little bad to say that this is also his fiancé? Although there is no monogamy in this world, it's easy to say, Tang En doesn't want to be misunderstood as a pervert. Remember, I am Tang En's fiancé, Misaka Mikato. Before Tang En could answer, Misaka Mikato, who couldn't wait for a long time, directly announced her identity arrogantly and domineeringly like my king back then. The soldier opened his mouth wide and looked at Tang En. He couldn't believe what he had just heard. The tea-haired girl in front of him was obviously only about 14 years old. Well, she is indeed my fiancé. Tang En nodded feebly, and admitted it bravely. As expected of Lord Tang En. Seeing Tang En nodding, the soldier's eyes were filled with shock and then turned into admiration. The head of his own branch is really amazing. Not only does he have such a powerful fiancé as Estes and Artoria, it can also make new highs while comforting the two, and keep earning one after another. Okay, you go down first. In the end, Tang En couldn't stand the adoring eyes of the soldiers looking at him, so he waved his hand to let him go down. Yes. Excited in his heart, the soldier moved his legs quickly, and left like a trot. It is estimated that Misaka Mikato's identity will soon be known by the branch navy. At the same time, in the sea area of the G5 branch, the fleet of the Big Mom Pirates is sailing here. There are a total of ten warships, tens of thousands of soldiers, and four generals personally lead the team. It was clear that the patrol had been duped. This time, the strength of the Big Mom Pirates far exceeded what the patrol found. Except that Big Mom didn't come in person, the Big Mom pirates had almost dispatched the strongest force in their hands. Brother Katakuri, Ski Island is ahead. Mom has been thinking about the strawberry cake on it for a long time, so let's order the attack. A man with three tufts of purple hair in the back of his head and a scar over his right eye couldn't wait to talk. He is the Biscuit Minister, one of the four general stars of desserts, Charlotte Cracker. Don't worry, wait for the fleet to get closer. Now the opponent has just entered the range of the shells. It is difficult for our shells to cause effective damage to them. Katakuri did not listen to Charlotte Cracker's words, but chose to attack cautiously, appearing very wise and steady. Ski Island, off the coast. Teams of Psyche soldiers were waiting in battle, rows of cannons were arranged in an orderly manner 
and they were about to let the cannonballs shoot at their enemies when King Psyche gave an order. The one coming from the opposite side is actually the main force of the Big Mom Pirates. It's over now. The military power of our Sky Island alone is far from enough to fight against them. When King Psyche saw the number on the other side, his heart went cold for the most part. The country of Ski is an island country in the New World, which is famous for its delicious strawberries. As a member of the world government, it also enjoys the right to be protected by the Navy. Because there are strawberries to drive the economy, the national strength is not bad, and the average little pirates are not the opponents of the country of Psyche. But today they are facing the Big Mom Pirates, the hegemony of the New World, and the opposing lineup is completely unmatched by them. Although the future nations of Big Mom Pirates have not yet taken shape, they are now one of the superpowers in the New World with more than a dozen islands. A man dressed as an officer stepped forward and reported to King Shi, Your Majesty, don't worry, I have already sent someone to notify the Navy of the G5 branch nearby, and let them protect us. Okay, that's good. I heard that the head of the G5 branch is the number one in the Navy competition. As long as the Navy supports it, the country of Psyche will be saved. King Psyche's face turned better and there is still hope for this war with the G5 branch ministers. It should be very easy for us to take the island by surprise this time, right? Although it was a question, Smoothie's tone was very relaxed, as if he was stating a fact. If there are no accidents, we will be able to capture this island soon. Although the defense force of Ski Island is good, but this time the four of us still have so many ministers who are not enough to look at it. Even if the G5 branch closest to here needs to send people to support, it will take half a day at the fastest. Besides, we have made them mistakenly think that it is only a small fleet General Binglanests, my King Artoria will definitely not make a move in person, even if the rest of the Navy comes, our Aunt Hai the thieves don't have to be afraid. Sky Island, this time we are bound to win. Katakuri explained the situation on Ski Island so clearly that the brothers and sisters around him couldn't help admiring it. Is that the Big Mom Pirates? It's really spectacular. There are at least tens of thousands of pirates on these ten battleships. Misaka Mikato stood at the bow and looked into the distance. The electromagnetic waves endowed her with the same top-level knowledge and domineering heart net as Anilo. She could hear the voices of those pirates densely packed and chaotic. It seems that the patrol team has been deceived. It's not for fishing, it's clearly for war. Tang An also leaned on the railing of the bow and looked at the tens of thousands of troops of the Big Mom Pirates with a telescope, and immediately understood the purpose of the Big Mom Pirates this time. Twain, don't make a move, leave them all to me. Look how good I am. Super Electromagnetic Cannon Misaka Mikato took out a special coin from her pocket, tossed it upwards, firmly connected the coin between her index finger and thumb, and then used electromagnetic force to launch the coin. Boom! The terrifying speed of the electromagnetic gun even leaves an afterimage in the air. The orange beam is like a laser. Its power can even pierce the concrete ground where the range track passes. The strong wind generated by the aftermath alone has surpassed the general wind power. The strength of those who... Originally, the game coins used by the electromagnetic gun would burn out due to friction and heat if they exceed 50 meters, but there are many materials in One Piece world that have a smaller friction factor than the game coins. Dunn randomly got her a few special coins, which made the the range of the super electromagnetic gun is much greater than the 50 meters in the original animation. Under the power of the super electromagnetic gun, the calm sea suddenly became rough and roared. Not good, quickly defend. Katakuri, who was very knowledgeable and domineering, was the first to discover the existence of the electromagnetic gun, and his expression changed and he ordered in a hurry. What's the matter, Katakuri-san? Everyone didn't know what happened yet, but their hands had already started to move. Although they didn't know why Katakuri issued such an order, the habits they had developed over the years made them obey Katakuri's words very much. However, at this moment, 
An orange beam of terrifying power appeared behind the fleet. Hide. How to hide? The speed of the super electromagnetic gun is getting faster and faster. Damn. Katakuri cursed secretly, if they were hit, their entire fleet would be finished. This is something he absolutely does not allow to happen. Katakuri's face was solemn, and his arms instantly swelled, countless times larger than the giants. This is the ability of Nyonyo fruit, which can turn the body into rice cakes and change the size of the body at will. The white rice cake's arm instantly turned pitch black, and Katakuri covered his arm with a thick layer of armed domineering color. Facing the incoming super electromagnetic gun, punch it. Rumbling. An explosion that resounded through the sky and the earth spread throughout the entire sea area, and everyone's ears were shaken. The stormy sea is raging. There are waves of more than 10 meters high one after another. The Big Mom pirates are like a boat swaying in the wind in the stormy sea. Countless pirates are rolling around on the deck. Roll to the left for a while, and roll to the right for a while. Rolling so dizzy, I can't even stand still. Tick, tick, tick. Katakuri's normal arm was trembling. The whole arm is dripping with blood. There was constant blood dripping on the deck. Obviously, it was not so easy to take over Misaka Mikato's super railgun just now. Brother Katakuri! exclaimed Smoothie and the Cracker at the same time. They know how strong Katakuri is, but it can be said that he is the strongest of the Big Mom pirates except for Charlotte Lingling, even if the two of them add up, they are not rivals. Now he suffered such a serious injury as soon as he took over. It's okay, as long as the fleet is still there, let them all shoot at the warship from the south. Katakuri shook his head, his face remained unchanged, as if he was not the one whose arm was pierced through, this unbearable pain for ordinary people could not make this man frown. Navy support is here, let's fire. Naturally, King Psyche on the island of Psyche would not miss such a good opportunity, and hastily ordered the soldiers on the coastline to stand ready. Bang 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 bang! Cannons fly! Dozens of shells were fired in an instant. Blow up the Big Mom pirate group who was about to turn to cry. The Big Mom pirates, who were wandering in the storm, suddenly fell into the dilemma of being caught between two sides. The three warships in the front row attacked Ski Island, the three in the back aimed at the naval warships, and the four in the middle searched for fighters. In an instant, Katakuri analyzed the current situation clearly and made appropriate countermeasures. Really, it was actually blocked. Misaka Mikato curled her lips, a little unhappy. This time, the electromagnetic cannon fired with Dun and special coin was her triumphant blow, but she didn't expect it to be blocked by the opponent abruptly. It must be Tang En, your coins are not good. What do you mean my coin is not good? My coin is a good material for special use. Don't you start to find the reason from yourself. Tang En raised his eyebrows, and complained to this Tsundera sister that he insisted on shifting responsibility for things that had nothing to do with him. Is there still a reason for this? My super electromagnetic gun is the strongest stunt. Only if your coins fail, will my attack be blocked. Misaka Mikato grabbed Tang En's sleeve, and said viciously with a proud face. Forget it, I'm going to settle accounts with you when I go back, let's deal with the enemy in front of me first. Over time, the warship finally appeared in front of the Big Mom pirates. The girl with the protruding bow attracted the attention of many pirates. Did that kid release that move just now? Impossible, this girl is probably not even 15 years old. Don't worry about that, hurry up and sink that warship. A group of pirates immediately started to move, loaded shells, and fired at Tang En's warship. Bang 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 bang! More than 100 shells densely formed a barrage and rushed towards Tang En's warship. It's ridiculous that the iron cannon tried to hit me. The corners of Misaka Mikato's mouth rose slightly, and she gently pushed the oncoming cannonball with both hands. A huge electromagnetic field stopped in front of the warship. All the shells stopped abruptly in the magnetic field, 
and then shot in the direction they came from. Nanny. More than 100 shells hit. The pirates were dumbfounded. Boom boom boom. The artillery shells fell into the battleship rapidly, blowing up those minions to the sky. Close to their boat, I'm going to jump on it. Misaka Mikato turned her head and ordered to a soldier behind her. Yes, Misaka Mikato-sama. The soldier navy accepted the order without any hesitation. After knowing that Misaka Mikato was also Tang En's fiancé, the branch navy agreed that they should also listen to this newcomer in the future. After all, Lord Tang En's fiancés are better than each other, and this is probably not an ordinary person. Now that they saw Misaka Mikato's strength, everyone knew what they should do. The speed of the warship was very fast, and after a round of shells was ejected, the Big Mom pirates did not dare to fire easily. So Misaka Mikato soon boarded the battleship of the Big Mom pirates. Who are you? Why are our shells being bounced back? Are you a navy? As soon as Sister Pao boarded the boat, a group of vicious pirates with weapons in their hands surrounded her. My name is Misaka Mikato. As for why your shells bounce back, it's because I can control the electromagnetic force. I'm not a navy yet, but my lover is a navy, so I'm going to help him solve you. Miss Pao gave a harmless smile. He took out a special coin that Tang and gave her again from his pocket, and tossed it up lightly. The lightning flashed instantly at the fingertips. It's like a series of thunder snakes dancing on the fingertips. The violent electric current made the surrounding air violent and restless. Bursts of current spread to the surroundings, causing everyone to be blindfolded and kept retreating. Is this the trick just now? That move that caught Akurisama can't resist. Damn it, everyone run away. The electric light is getting stronger and stronger, and all fools know that there is a terrifying force that they cannot resist. Nobody can go faster than my railgun. Misaka Mikato's brown eyes blinked playfully, and the falling coin shot out instantly. Rumbling. There was an explosion in the air. The explosion produced an extremely violent wind. Even Misaka Mikato was blown so that her bangs fluttered, her short skirt was turned up, and she had to be blocked by safety pants, otherwise she would be gone in one blow. An orange light beam passed through like a laser, and there was no grass growing and the wooden deck was lifted out of a semicircular trajectory. The dazzling electric light attracted the attention of everyone in the Big Mom Pirates. The railgun is so powerful it's hard not to notice. What happened? Katakuri, who returned to the main ship to command the fleet, saw the sudden flashes of lightning on the battleship behind, and said in a deep voice. Master Katakuri, according to the news from over there, the person who used the railgun has already boarded the ship. A pirate reported to Katakuri respectfully. Asshole. Didn't I ask them to fire back? How did they get contacted so quickly? Katakuri snorted coldly, got up and prepared to go to the battleship that was shining with lightning in the rear. This, subordinates don't know, the phone bug communication just now has been cut off. The pirate replied tremblingly. Okay, I understand, you go down first. Katakuri waved at him, his face became very gloomy, he had a premonition that this operation might fail. This kind of premonition is often very accurate, especially as Katakuri gets stronger and stronger, his premonition becomes more and more accurate, but he still doesn't know why he has such a premonition that almost predicts the future. On the stern ship, the electric light dissipated. White smoke billowed from the deck, and there were even some flames burning around. Looking around, a gap of tens of meters appeared on the deck of the entire battleship, dividing the entire battleship into two from Misaka Mikato's position. Even the sea behind was divided into two halves. From a distance, it looks like it was cut in the middle by someone. This is the strength of the super electromagnetic gun. It must have burned the coins because the distance was too far. Seeing such horrific damage from her electromagnetic gun, Miss Pao nodded in satisfaction and at the same time did not forget to complain to Tang and on the ship. Good dong. 
the surrounding pirates swallowed hard. Looking at this figure who was less than 14 or 15 years old with fear in his eyes, it was like looking at a little devil. Misaka Mikato. I don't remember that there is a number one powerhouse like you in the new world. Also. Hey. Katakuri and Cracker, who rushed over in a small boat, looked at the young girl in front of them with expressions of disbelief. This is too small. It's clearly just a doll that hasn't grown up. It can destroy a battleship with one blow. What? Do I still need to report to you if I am a strong person? Misaka Mikato crossed her arms and looked at Katakuri and Cracker proudly, like a proud swan. In that case, prepare to die. Whether my Cracker is a man or a woman, an old man or a child, as long as it is my enemy, I will die. Charlotte Cracker looked at Misaka Mikato with a smirk without the slightest bit of pity because of her appearance.